Hey, welcome SOBs viewers. Thanks for coming back. Uh, you're tuning in to Stream of Blood, the tabletop role playing uh, stream hosted by me, writer, comedian, tabletop role playing enthusiast Jared Logan. And today you have tuned in at 2 p.m. on a Sunday, so you are watching the Neptune Society, our ongoing series. Uh, based on the Call of Cthulhu 7th edition role playing a game um it's uh it's about a society of people uh who uh combat the forces of the Cthulhu mythos all over the world in the 19th century yes it's dickensian it is victorian uh and it is uh, very eldritch uh we have a great episode uh prepared for you today today part 2 of the eldritch continent our players have journeyed to Africa uh, to uncover the horrible forces of the Cthulhu mythos there. But before I get into all that, I have to give my usual spiel. I have to say, hey, click that little heart so that you follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter and Facebook, because we let you know on those uh, those platforms. Oh, and on Instagram, when we're doing uh, extra games or what our lineups are going to be, the, the Neptune Society always has a rotating cast of all-star incredible actors, improvisers, and comedians. So uh, follow us on all those social media platforms so you know what's coming up. And we have some really big news that we're going to really be releasing in uh, probably a couple days. So I really want you guys to be following so you know when to catch those extra shows. Um, the title card you just saw, that really cool image of a, a colossal Cthulian beast about to eat a sailing ship is by will potorf go to willpotorf.com to uh, see all of his artwork he draws monsters and particularly cthulhu monsters better than anybody else out there uh, and we are going to also have some original game art from uh, one of our role players here on this show and our, our other show ross bryant um guys we have some theme music today that was new uh, it, it, you might have heard the, the strange uh, sort of chthonic chanting that opened the show today. And that opening music is by a guy who, or, or gal actually, I don't know, because the, the handle is, uh, is sex neutral. Uh, Warbird, uh, who uh, gave us a new uh, tune called The Light, uh, which, oh, it is a he, which he described as being inspired by the chance of party wiping and the old, go old gods winning. So for my players, if you're listening, uh, Warbird uh, wants a party wipe today, and I think I have to give it to him. He was nice enough to give me that incredible music. So I think, I think I'm going to try to kill all the players today. Not the players, their characters. Um, okay, well, if you want to hear more of Warbird's music, and that was definitely really cool and spooky and atmospheric, go to soundcloud.com forward slash Warbird. And finally... We don't have a Patreon at Stream of Blood. We don't ask for your money, but you know what? There's a lot of very important work going on in the country right now, um, and it's been really in the news over the last couple of weeks. So we ask you to go to joincampaignzero.org and donate to them instead of donating to us. If you enjoy our shows, if you uh, think we do a good job on here, um, then show us by uh, keeping in your mind all the very important work that needs to be done in the country to improve and change how policing works uh, and to listen to the voices of people of color uh, in the United States of America. And let's keep the horror in the game and not in, out in the real world where we all have to live. Uh, okay, great. Uh, now I'm going to make the transition to bringing in our cast. Uh, geez, you know, I mean, last time they completely derailed my adventure in the best and most entertaining way. And I actually am the type of uh, game master who loves when that happens. So I'm just so excited to bring uh, these performers to you today. Um, I'm going to start with uh, a guy who has his own uh, streaming show where they play uh, tabletop role-playing games, a, a spell jammer campaign, in fact, um, which is one of the coolest uh, uh, Dungeons and Dragons settings out there. Um, and he's also just a killer comedian and a really funny guy. His, his show is called Better Than Heroes, um, and his name is Andrew Orvidal, everybody. Thank you for What's having up, dude? me. What's up? Um, you're very welcome. Thank you for being here. And um, let's see, your character is Ian Pembley. He's a, kind of a proto-archaeologist. 
Yeah, archaeologist uh, in the way that he would say that to get access to a country that he can then loot. He's right. uh, not a great, not a great dude. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's uh, just kind of a, a portly little uh, schemer. That's lovely. And um, he's in Africa helping out uh, our friend Quincy Faramore. And how do you think it went for him last time? He he had some ups <laughs> and downs. It got crazy. Uh, poorly. Think? Poorly. As uh, anyone who watched the first episode went, we barely survived a lion and then <laughs> <laughs> barely survived an attack at, at the graveyard. So, um, yeah, it's been a uh, it's been an anxious week. <laughs> yeah. Well, Waiting I think that. I think that um, you played so well and so strategically and like smartly, uh, but this I think that like this is also an early uh, experience for playing Call of Cthulhu. Is it your first? Experience? Yeah, I had no idea how hard it was. Like as soon as yeah. I was like, "Oh, it's four turns to reload my gun," and in the meantime, <laughs> I'm just I'm just in the tall grass with the lion. Like yeah. I was like, that, "That is brutal." I played some yeah. tough games, but this. This game takes the cake. I think. Well, you, you played it with panache, sir. Um, and uh, I look forward to you surviving maybe today. Let's see. Um, I'm going to bring in your next player. Um, she is a phenomenal actress and performer um, who you've seen in films uh, as part of Team Unicorn. Um, you can see her do tabletop role-playing streaming right now on a platform called Geghead. Uh, and she's a dear old friend of mine from our theater major days. I'm not going to tell you how long ago that was because uh, you won't be able to tell when you see the amazing Miss Claire Grant, everybody. Hello. Hi. How's it going? I'm so happy. It's good. It's good. I'm happy yeah. to come back and not die. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, I'm going to try to kill you, but maybe you'll, <laughs> maybe you'll live, you know? Your character yes. is the most equipped for kicking ass. How, how do you think Definitely. it went for uh, your character, uh, Valda uh, LeBeau, last time? Well, she had some good luck and she had some really bad luck. And if you weren't such a nice GM, I, I think she just would have died there with that lion. But, yeah. um, you know, she made up for it, I guess, in the graveyard. And she ultimately killed the lion, didn't she? Wasn't she, she the one? shot his head off. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. yeah she, 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 she has a high body count already. I mean, you know, live or die. She, at least she took some people with her. That's what's important. It is. At least she took a poor defenseless lion with her. Um, <laughs> poor defenseless? Right. That thing was born with a weapon on Man, every part of its body. I know. And it was, uh, I, it's really a, just like a lion. Like, I didn't like, I, I didn't go, we got to pump up these stats and make it a, it was just a lion. And it was uh, extremely tough. That's if you are running thing. Call of Cthulhu and you want to give your players a huge challenge that'll last hours, <laughs> just get yeah. a lion out of the rule book. <laughs> and when they're like, where's the Eldritch Cthulhu evil? Be like, guys, you can't even handle a lion. Why am I going to throw? <laughs> um, well, thank you for being here, Claire. It's so nice to just hear your voice and see you again. And uh, we're gonna have you fun too. today. Uh, I'm yes, gonna bring out, yeah, I'm gonna bring out our final guy. Uh, this guy, uh, he's been seen on the Neptune Society before. Um, he uh, has his own podcast that is a musical podcast, um, and he's just a very talented uh, improviser and performer. And um, he plays uh, self-proclaimed. I'm not putting this on him. The stupidest. Mm -hmm character in the neptune society uh <laughs> and he truly is uh, a loose cannon i'll say he's at, at least that please welcome zach reno everybody ah oh, jared 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 you have no you have now twice failed to kill the stupidest and worst <laughs> character first you tried the big monster whale and i put yeah. my character in the monster whale's mouth yes didn't kill him. then you did the lion and the lion was honestly worse than the monster whale <laughs> um the lion got close but didn't get close enough. Yeah. Um, no, that's true. That the, you got Quincy swallowed is a by a monster whale. Yeah, he is. Quincy and the 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 yes, Quincy did lay some clever traps and did survive the lion. Um, is still looking to make a hot air balloon. Does have a box of beef. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's sort of what he has uh, acquired. Oh, we but I can't stress them. enough that every time Quincy does not die he doesn't learn from his mistakes. <laughs> so he just gets more and more powerful. And the only way that he will learn is if he dies. So it's sort of a horrible, impossible. Um, 
He's never going to learn. And really, yeah. what better metaphor for America this 4th of July weekend? Yes. Really. The only way we'll learn is if we'll die. And once we die, and we'll never die, so we'll never learn. Yeah. <laughs> Happy Independence Day. Um, <laughs> let's die so we can learn, everybody. Um, and, uh, and on this Independence Day, let's shift the scene to Africa, uh, the year 1852. So I'm going to let us pick up. Uh, kind of the moment that we left off, actually, uh, because I think that there were there were some questions left unanswered. So, in, in way of brief recap, our uh, our players, our characters, uh, were were in Africa, and they were um, following a map that had been left to Quincy Fairmore, Zach character's brother. Um, actually, they found the map in, in a shipwreck. His brother's shipwreck. His brother had been missing for many, many years. And uh, when our three characters, Ian Pemley, Val de Lebeau, and Quincy Fairmore, got their hands on the map, they realized it led to a mountain. That uh, inside that mountain, there was some sort of ancient civilization or ancient tomb or mine uh, belonging to a queen named Natakris uh, from antiquity. Um, and so they uh, devised several different plans on maybe how they would tackle this mine, um, one of which was perhaps... <laughs> using a hot air balloon to get to it. Um, but eventually they decided to travel overland through the jungle, immediately came into contact with a lion, the aforementioned lion, uh, which almost kill, almost party wiped the lion. <laughs> um, they uh, then had to uh, rest and heal up for months. Thank uh, God. Quincy Fury more specifically had to, because uh, at one point the lion had had his his skull in its mouth. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have and, a scar that specifically now prevents me from growing facial hair. That's right. <laughs> yes. Um, which oh, only leads me to believe that you look hideous. Yeah, great. I look very good, but in a sort of hideous, hideous <laughs> handsome. Um, and uh, then they did a little, you know. Um, investigating around the village they kind of put some clues together and they realized that um a mysterious uh, mythological perhaps being that the villagers uh, kept talking about um a white devil that was stealing uh from their graves uh was probably actually unbelievably horribly quincy fairmore's brother quentin um yes there he uh, is. and that is how quentin appeared when he finally appeared in the graveyard after our player characters had set a trap for him, um, you guys, uh, I don't know if I would, I would say, I mean, ingeniously, but maybe I would say uh, horrifyingly, uh, set a bunch of bombs and weird traps around the graveyard. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and uh, you blew uh, uh, the creatures that were with Quint uh, Quentin Fairmore, like these strange, like baboon like creatures that were like kind of like could walk on two legs but had like canine type snouts you blew a bunch of them to kingdom come you took out others with your traps and your guns uh and now um you um and and, and actually our, our poor friend ian pembley was almost uh snatched away by one of them out into the jungle but i think valda saved his life and so so in the aftermath, we can we can put you back in the village. We can put you healing up. But I want to know what you did with these bodies. There were the bodies of these strange creatures, and the body of your um, your brother is laying there in the graveyard. What do you do? What do you do after in the aftermath of this battle? I, I'll just set the scene. It's this small uh, graveyard, you know, outside the little village of Bela in uh, French Guinea, Africa. The big green jungle hangs all around you, and there's just smoke wafting up from like six bodies that were blown to kingdom come by your bombs. Um, and you see your brother Quincy kind of laying there on the floor of the graveyard, just kind of. <laughs> um so what would you like to do um you had said at the end of the last like he's oh, i guess he's going uh, uh, uh dead people don't generally go uh, uh, uh. so i guess i'll because valda killed all the things that were of imminent danger to us right and then smashed them a lot with a big stick or something or yeah and you did too a little bit well i said a very clever trap Yes. Um, I'll walk up to my to my brother. Like, okay. <laughs> Not so strong now, aren't you? A very dirty man right now, Quentin. What do um, you have to say for yourself? Well, he's covered in burns. 
uh, from the explosion that you caused to happen to him. Uh, yeah, but he is alive. You see his breath moving up and down in his chest, and he's kind of reaching up to you. Uh, but unless he receives medical attention soon, it looks like he may die. So uh, how much does Quincy hate his own flesh and br- blood, his brother? If I'm going to kill you, it'll be in a fair fight where we're facing each other with guns and knives, not letting you bleed out on the street. Yes, Very also, good. I believe that we can get information from him if he is alive and we can question him. And otherwise, we can just bring him back to the villagers and let them have their white devil. All Maybe right. we can get something from that, too. I forgot about the information part. Yes, that's also important. Thank you, Valda. Yeah, um, yeah. I'll, I'll try to attend to him with medical. Well, I'm not good at it. No, I think it, I literally cannot. <laughs> not with not in the traditional sense of medicine I, I being. Could, a I could give it a shot. Yes, good Great. luck, Valda. Okay, so what is your first aid or medicine skill? And by the way, I want I just want to bring Ian Pembley in. Ian uh, was passed out from a major uh, uh, major loss of HP last time, so they're all sitting here discussing this while Ian like lays there. Uh, I think I'm unconscious, well. right? You I don't are. believe I was ever brought back to consciousness. Yeah. Also, I I think um. Did I take like a scarring wound from that? You did, yeah. So um, I, I let I let the players decide what what happens uh, in terms of their scarring wound. I so was, uh, cool. I have I have one in, in honor of Stream of Blood technical producer Brian Baldinger, whose ear I sadistically took in a game I was running for him. I'll say that my ear has been kind of like taken off. I just have like a nub of an ear left. That's awesome. I love that. Um, yes, you have a nub of the ear, and just so you're not bored, would your character like to have a dream or something right now? Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. If I'm unconscious, I guess, um, I don't know. Am I, is there any effect from the wounds of these creatures? Does they, um, uh, I think that, I think that you, I'll give you a dream. I'll tell you, you dream of an enormous, like, ruby. Um, it, it's, and, and, you know, your character is a, a geologist and someone who steals artifacts. So for whatever reason, like you find that you're dreaming of this beautiful kind of Ruby and like, sort of like, you kind of like going inside of it till you're in this like multifaceted red, scarlet hued, like prism. And it's, oh, so beautiful. And it might just be, uh, the different chemical levels on your brain fluctuating wildly from the panic and shock that you experienced right before being knocked unconscious, uh, by a mortal wound, but maybe it's something more. Yeah, um, I mean, this is be as good as Ian Pimbley's dreams get. So yeah, if anything, <laughs> in my conscious state, I'm just sort of like, mm, 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 like uh, <laughs> making these awful sounds. So let's see how uh, Valda LeBeau did uh, with healing uh, Mr. Quentin, uh, Mr. Quentin uh, Ferrymore, uh, who is now uh, reduced to this feral state. Valda, what is your first, what are you using, first aid or medicine? First aid. And what is your skill in that? 45. Okay, so not, not, per, not awful. It starts at 30. You have 15 higher than that. So here's what I'm going to rule. I'm going to rule that if you succeed right now, you will stop this man from dying and you can try to get information from him. Information you're, you're going to need in order to go and explore the mine. But if right. you fail right now, he dies and you won't, you may never get to the bottom of this mystery. So can I, uh, I have may, first aid, but I'm less good at it, but I will um, try to help if I can. I think that you can. Um, I'll tell you what, if you can succeed at your first aid role, uh, Quentin, I'll give Valda a bonus die on her role. Uh, well, I rolled a 99. So that's <laughs> okay, not great. So it's a critical miss. So I'm now giving Valda a penalty no. die. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> shit. Here, so, let, me, let me help. I've brought in heavy step, wooden planks to put upon him. We Stop the to, blood from it. We have to bleed him some more. Um, okay. Oh, shit. Valda, um, roll uh-huh. twice and take the worst of the two rolls. It's so rude. Ooh. Okay. My first one is 24. Okay, so that's a success. Had you not been helped. (laughs) 
29. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. So this is I the want... scene where Valda convinces me not to help. Listen, that's insane. I want you to check your first aid skill because you just succeeded despite Quincy Fairmore's stupidity uh, <laughs> trying to help and hurting you. Oh, um, okay. And this guy has been stabilized, so you can get both him and Ian Pembley uh, back to the village, or you can or take them to like the hut you guys have been staying in. Um, if you want to keep them out of the villagers' sight, is that is that what you're going to do? Or are you going to continue to administer to them out here in the in the woods? Kind of. No, I'm going to take them uh, to the hut to keep them out of sight until we get all the information we need and formulate a plan. Okay, very good. Are you sure you didn't want my idea of putting big chunks of wood in their mouths to keep them from bite, <laughs> choking on their own tongues? This is something that I saw one time someone do. If you would like to gag your brother on the way to yes. the to our, absolutely. I'm helping, yes. Eat this but, wood, brother. Both Ian and Quentin now have large chunks of wood in their mouths, <laughs> apropos of nothing. Um, <laughs> you... Let's cut to a little while later. Um, I'm going to allow um, some healing for Ian Pembley. Um, Ian, uh, let's see. Um, we can. Uh, I'm going to say since you can take your time with Ian and it's not like an uh, emergency thing, he already survived it on his own, you can go ahead and roll a uh, D4 of healing for Ian. Okay. Four. Four. That's good. So he's up to six. And look, he might be he might be doing a lot better before action occurs. But I'm just making sure we know where he's at if action happens in this hut or in the next couple minutes. Okay. And Ian, you can also be conscious again if you'd like. Yeah, uh, I can so I'll take the wood out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of well, massage well, well. my job. Look like, who's come to. You're welcome for not letting you choke on your own tongue, Pembley. Uh, uh -huh. And you're all kind of standing around uh, the bed of Quentin Ferrymore, and now you look at him, and yes, it is indeed your brother, but something has changed in the many years since he was lost at sea. He now has a wild head of hair and a gigantic mane and a huge beard, but uh, worse than that, uh, his very features, the way he, yes, look, he's covered <laughs> in mud and uh, camouflage and look at that nasty scar it looks like he's been in many fights with wild beasts dreadlocked Why? armpit hair yes he's got dreadlocked armpit hair or maybe that's some sort of animal Ew. feces look the point I is like he's gone yes it's supposed to make you feel uh not good because he has gone completely feral the the the, the creature in the bed before you might be mistaken for something other than a man. And so um, you, you see him kind of uh, like uh, slightly mumbling in his uh, drugged sleep. And it seems like he's coming too. So I want to know um, what you're going to try to, how you're going to try to interrogate him. Uh, first of all, I'd uh, see if I have some rope here. I believe I do. Maybe I don't. Um, Walter, do you either of you have any rope? Um, I have a rope. I also, yes, I have a rope. Okay, great. Um, he, I, I, uh, what would you like to do with that rope, Ian? Let's say I we have, I tie, have a... we tied uh, Quincy's brother to the bed. Yes, Good. not, not, not a bad idea. Um, I have a now... net. Shall I put the net over him after we tie him with the rope? Uh, can't hurt. Uh, <laughs> is is this when we use the bees? <laughs> Do we just smother his body in honey and let the bees have at him? Well, let's see. What? Hmm. I don't know a lot about bees. What happens if we do? Bees don't eat honey, do they? They make honey. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I believe it's food that for their is babies. A very fair point. So if we put honey on him, maybe we will convince. I'm Vala. I'm going to think about what to do with the bees here because I think you're onto something with the bees. Um, so you guys have tied him to the bed and put a net over him, right? Yes. He suddenly comes to and goes, ah! <laughs> ah, 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 ah! he's like straining against the ropes, like ah! trying to bite your face. Ah! <laughs> Thanks for the close up, Flint. <laughs> trying to bite <laughs> your faces off. Uh, and he's straining against the ropes. Boy, I wonder if you did a good job with those ropes. Let's have him do a little strength roll here. And net. Oh, and no. net that was over the ropes. Um, let's see. Did he do it? 
Oh boy, um, you're in big trouble. Um, the first time he strains <laughs> against them, you can see that he's like he doesn't break the ropes, but he's like really kind of pulling them so hard that he might pull the bed up off the ground. Um, it, you've got a situation, so I need to know how you are going to either subdue him or interrogate him. How are you going to get some information you want out of him? Uh, how much time has it been since the graveyard battle? I think it's been hours. Is that okay. enough of an answer? Yes, that's the. Per I think I would have reloaded my um, painfully slow rifle, and I'll yes. uh, I'll level it at him and uh, and cock it. That's Valda, a yes. great idea. Um, I would like to grab my pistol, but have it ready to hit him over the head with it, not shoot him in the head. Okay, great. Uh, and I've got a big with... net and I'm holding it up like this and I'm going to sit on the bed to keep the bed from so I'm like sitting next oh. to him on the bed with the net to keep the bed down because you said the rope was fine right mm. uh, that's <laughs> right the rope is not broken yet I'm but he is down the bed, against it and I'm here with the net okay um, it looks like you all kind of have the jump on him. I mean, clearly, I mean, like if he breaks free, you can blow his brains out. So, um, he's not so feral that he, he doesn't realize that. And so now he just kind of sits back on the bed. Like, yes, you've been had. Have you not brother? Um, just out of curiosity, do you speak the queen's English anymore? Yes. Oh, very good. What's happened to your voice? Where's your, I you understand a... brother. Oh. What happened to the big hat you had when you left? <laughs> a big one. Big red one. Big feather in it. Don't spit. That's disgusting. The big <laughs> hat. He, uh, he's not responding to the where is your hat line of questioning. Well, I've tried everything I can. Your turn. Have you? I'll kind of uh, step forward uh, with uh, this like greedy glint in my eyes and I'm uh, going to ask him like, Tell me, friend, have you seen a, a ruby, perhaps uh, uh, this this large? Um, his eyes get very wide, uh, and, uh, and then he smiles like he has a secret that you're not aware of. <laughs> <sighs> you're going to need some sort of role to get him to talk. Do we, is, there any, is there any food in the tent where we're in right now. I think it's reasonable to assume you guys would keep food around. <laughs> um, can I use some of my greasy charm? I know that he's like feral, but I'll kind of, I'll try to good cop him. I'll kind of, I'm going to let the, let the rifle just sort of be loosely cradled in my arm. I'll sit on the other side of the bed across from fairy Moore, And I want to try to, uh, use my charm on him to like maybe get him to divulge his secret. I think that's an interesting yes. play. I think that maybe maybe um, bouncing off of what Fairymore just said, you, you you could offer him some food too. I mean, yeah. who knows? I'll walk might... over. Maybe there's a plate of fruit, and I'll kind of set it down. I'll be like, friend, I'm sure you're a bit uh, peckish after a night of grape robbing. Maybe a a, a mango. <laughs> okay, you can roll. <laughs> I don't know. You can roll, but this is such a weird circumstance to be charming someone in that I want it to be a hard charm roll. All right. Ooh. Oh, I got a twenty, but that's not my hard. Um, twenty is, your... is. Oh no, that is my hard. My hard is twenty. Wow, that's amazing. I um, have a forty that's... in charm, so twenty is hard. Yeah. So, um. Uh, you are like, have a mango, relax. And uh, he does appear to relax a little bit. And he, but he looks at like the, the plate of food and he says, uh, I don't eat fruit. Well, that's new. You used to eat fruit all the time. Specifically, you <laughs> love mango. Fish or chicken. Beef. No. Oh no, you don't need people, do you? Um Well, friend, I'm afraid I don't have a person for you to eat, but Well hold on, I might. Hold on. Um I have become more through the power of Natakris. Hmm. So about Natakris, we got the map that you sent off for your brother to find you know the one 
that we well, found hold, shortly hold after on. you were shipwrecked. Why, why are you making an angry face? Because it was not for you. Well, then it who was, was it for? It was for me to follow. Well, it's not my fault. You got your stupid ship sunk in the bottom of the ocean, you idiot. And even that didn't stop me from changing into a higher life form. You see him oh, pretty that. How did you do the that? muscles in his neck go. And he's just like straining them so much that you see. Uh, let's see. I sit on the see. bed extra hard. <laughs> no, he hasn't broken the ropes yet. Oh. He like screams against them again. Um, if you have a question you want to ask with your charm, I would suggest you do it uh, now. Uh, a specific question. Um, uh, what I want to know about this ruby specifically because I'm yes. just that greedy. Um, come, friends. I'm from one jewel connoisseur to another. What can you tell me about this ruby? The eye of Natakras. It showed me. It showed me when I will die. When's that? You know, now. <laughs> do you know what it said? What did it say? That I won't die. Ah! And as he does that, like long fangs start to kind of sprout out of his face, uh, and his nope. face becomes more nope. canine like. No, nope. I shoot him in his the head. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I turn, I turn my my gun around and I just shoot him in the head. Can I? Can I roll for that? We all shoot him in the head. No, nope. first, first everybody makes. Absolutely not. First, first, everybody makes a sanity, a sanity roll. roll. What's everybody's right. sanity at? Um, mine's, mine's at got a 69. 46. Mine's at 60. Um, uh, Claire's is at the most hilarious number it could be at. All right. So um, <laughs> you guys need to roll under your sanity. And if you, if you fail, you this no, is... Hold on, Jared. Sorry. Worth it? Worth it? <laughs> I got a 53. So I'm under. Yeah. I succeed. Oh, wait. Okay. 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 So you, you succeeded. Okay, great. And then how did you... Uh, let, let's just say this. If you fail this one, which... Valda did not. You will take a D6 of sanity because this is so insane and scary. And um, that means you could lose five or more and go temporarily insane. Let's see how Ian Pembley and Quincy Ferrymore do. I rolled a 32 under 60. Great. Poor Quincy has the least sanity of you all with a 45. How did you um, roll? What does this mean if they're all zero? Oh, that's bad. That means that's 100. 100. I've rolled 99 and 100 in this game. As I mean, two of the three rolls that I have done. Seeing your brother turn into some sort of baboon werewolf before your eyes after he uh, openly admits that he cannibalizes other humans mm -hmm. is the kind of thing that would maybe make you lose six sanity points. So you go temporarily insane. Now, what you said you wanted to do was fire your gun. And yeah. um, I think that everybody, I'm going to allow everybody to do that. Um, Ferrymore, did you had, you said you were firing your gun, didn't you? I did say I wanted to shoot him in the head. Now, ideally that was before he turned into a big wolf and scared us. Here's uh, the, san the insanity that I'm going to give you, uh, Ferrymore. You can't, you, I will allow you to fire your gun, but it's like looking at yourself. He looks so much like you. And then he starts to turn wow. into that thing. I shoot and myself so, in the head. Well, you kind of like look at yourself to make sure it's not happening to you maybe, or maybe for the next couple hours, let's see how many hours actually. Yeah. For like the next nine hours, you're going to be worried oh, that no. it's like, it's, it's something that might happen to you as okay. well. So, um, but go ahead and uh, everybody, you know what? Don't even bother making gun rolls unless you find it really entertaining because you're all at point blank range and he's not moving. Right. I mean, let's just, uh, Let's just say that you all open up with muskets in the middle of a village <laughs> at a guy that's like four feet away. Um, and um, when you do that, um, you blast him into pieces. I mean, like the gore goes flying. He kind of explodes as these musket balls hit him in the face, ripping off part of his face, blasting off a piece of his arm and torso. And now he this like big pile of red tomato sauce mush is laying on the bed in front of you. Um, boy, I mean, I, on, in another game that was ultra realistic, I might ask for a sanity roll just for that horrifying murder that just occurred. We but... do murder all the time. Murder is fine. <laughs> yes. Wolfmen are weird. Yes. Um, so your brother appears to be dead. Um, now just out of curiosity. 
Yes. He did say he would never die, right? You you both heard him say that. Yes, perhaps we should keep an eye on this pile of gore. I'm going to wipe the spattered blood from my eyes. Uh, I think I got some in my mouth. Can you look at my teeth real quick? Yes, you did. Are they? Okay, I thought I maybe did. Are they big and long, my teeth? They they are normal sized teeth. Thank God, bit, that was a bit exactly equine, but that, no no larger than usual. Why? What does that mean? Nothing. What is equine like a horse? It, yes, it's a compliment. Did I have horse teeth? <laughs> yes, big healthy. But they're teeth. not not wolf teeth. Flat teeth, like a horse. Yes. Good. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, you. I will uh, reload my gun. <laughs> I will also me. take you five hours in session to reload one. my yeah. gun. We spend the next hour reloading our guns. Okay, it takes it takes a long time to reload your guns, um, and as you do that, uh, the body doesn't appear to move or go anywhere. Um, so uh, it doesn't it doesn't rise from the grave. So let me know what you'd like to do next, and keep in mind, uh, my friend, uh, Mister Pembley, that you know that that ruby is out there in that mine somewhere. Mm-hmm. Would you say we? We might uh, buy some goodwill with the villagers by showing them the remains of this white devil. Yes, I think they will like it yes. if we show them a big mushy pile of man that we shot in a tent. I think they will <laughs> like that a lot. Let's pull it outside and show them all the man that we've shot in the head. Um, you guys, are, are you doing that? Um, yeah, I'll bring... Well, I think I would go find the village chief or elder, whoever seems to be the authority figure in this village, and I will bring them to the hut instead of making a, a bigger scene of it. In fact, as soon as you pull back the flap on your hut and you look out, all of the villagers are out there. Villagers are out there and they have like muskets trained on your hut. I mean, they heard a bunch of gunshots and r- roaring. <laughs> um, <laughs> and like, I, as we, do we oh, all see that? Hands, yeah. We walk out, nope. we walk out with our hands up and it's we say, right. Is everything's it's, okay? We killed the white devil that was plaguing you. Would you like to come in and see its bits? Um, yes, we laid we laid traps in the graveyard, and we we killed a, a host of them. This one's the, my brother. I shot him in the head. The fool of people look extremely upset, and I would say reasonably so. I mean, you guys have come into their village. You've desecrated their graves. You've set traps that killed one of their number uh last episode and well, now we don't know that for sure. you're having gunplay inside we don't know that for sure that's right but now you're having gunplay inside the bounds of their village i think i need an extremely good social interaction role in order to make them not uh do something awful to you or or try to uh, t- take you out of the equation in some way so who What's is going so- could I tr- uh, try Social to try using my be, charm um, on them? All right, Claire, I should have been more specific. Social interaction, there are four skills. There's intimidation, there's charm, there's persuade, and uh, I believe there's one more. Oh, fast talk. Um, in this case, I will accept any of them, but it's going to be hard no matter what because these guys are reasonably very angry. Um, so what are you going to try, uh, Ian Pembley? I would try you... charm, and I would try to uh, maybe bolster this charm by by citing the evidence. We have bodies in the graveyard. We have this this half transformed white devil that we have have slain right here in this bed. Uh, so I got a oh no, it was a success, but not a hard success. I got a thirty under forty. Okay, that's not a bad. That's not a bad. Um... That's not a bad role, but here's what I'm going to say. Um, if you can also get at your African pigeon role, your African language role, if you can also get that, then you've succeeded. Oh, okay. I've got, that's my best. That's what I'm best at apparently. Oh, good. Uh, I didn't know that. Well, then maybe <laughs> you're going to do this. Maybe you're going to make this happen. What kind of role? Just a regular? Yeah. Are you yeah. kidding me? No way. I'll use my luck for that. I got an 83 over 80. I will definitely cash in three luck points to bring it. You sure you're not looking at own language? Own language would be 80, but your African skills oh, yeah, would probably sorry, be right. much less. I yes. Sorry, I just saw language. Yeah, so that's okay. Dramatic failure. <laughs> okay. Um, they raise uh, their guns and they are screaming at you, uh, you know, 
uh, you know, invaders, uh, you have brought evil spirits among us. Uh, y- you have to be killed to save the village. No, no, we're, we're leaving. We're just, we're, then, we're, we're going, we're going, we're going. Yes. And then I say, no, no, no. We, you told us when we got here that there was already this evilness that was happening. Our sole purpose in coming here was to help rid these evil things for you. That's it's right. All going we to did. Stop now. You um, let us walk away and it will never happen again. But if you, if, but you have us to thank for that. Can in I fact, we're, go, we're going, into- we're going to up into the mines right now to, to put it into the, whatever this, uh, Natakris businesses. Okay. I, I think that, uh, I, I liked Valda's, uh, speech. Um, but Valda, w- w- what skill did you say that you wanted to use? My intimidation skill. Okay, um, it sounded like you were being nice. Um, it sounded like you were kind of being reasonable. So that sounded like a persuade to me. Um, I, I hate to make you not use your best skill, but if you had told them, maybe she off, was or, like, kick your asses, then I would have let you use intimidate. Maybe she was subtly had her hand like on her gun or something. Oh, I like that. Well, okay. Now well, my, see, my gun was in my hand nice, the whole time. <laughs> okay, I never so took my gun away. Valdo had her gun out and was like, look, we're happy. <laughs> <laughs> had it in the air. Okay. Guns raised. Uh, I'm going to let you do intimidate, Valda. You're an intimidating presence. So go okay. ahead and roll your intimidate. Um, yeah, I've got and- blood all over me. Fucking guts. Yeah. Right. Yeah. In this situation, even it doesn't wouldn't matter what you say, you're going to be terrifying. <laughs> what if they're right on top of each other and not next to each other? Do you mean what if you rolled the exact number that your skill is at? Yeah. No, I rolled the two dice. They landed oh. on top of each other. Well, sort of. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I I'll be honest. I think you have to. Ro- ro- I don't. Again. Yeah, I know I'm supposed to have an answer. I don't know how to handle that. Um, <laughs> it sounds like you'll just have to tell me what numbers, like lift one off the other, and tell me what the numbers are. I've never had that. Okay, well I rolled a sixty-two. Out of your intimidation skill of sixty. Would you like to spend two luck? Yeah. Okay, you do that. So erase two luck, take your luck total down by two points, and you succeed. And I love that uh, Pembley uh, very carefully made a good argument, and then Valda just like was like covered in blood <laughs> and talking quickly with a gun in her hand, and they all just kind of pull out and they just start saying, "Leave now, go now!" Right, right, of course. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so you guys start to exit the village. You're leaving behind the body of Quentin Ferrimore. You're leaving behind the body of those creatures. Um, and uh, you're possibly leaving behind some items. Um, you know, we'll, we'll deal with that later if it becomes a thing. I, all I'll tell you is that as you exit the village, you see that the Fula tribesmen have a hot air balloon uh, that oh. Quincy has asked them to find, <laughs> and they're burning it. They're tearing it to shreds. You stupid they're, bastards. <laughs> they're breaking it up with axes. The hot air balloon is totally destroyed. So um, I would grab You have made my a powerful air. enemy today, you tribesmen. But you have burned my, <laughs> what I believe to be my sacred object, a hot air balloon. And I will, I will bring horrible reckoning upon your people. I'll try to sort of be like hustling Fairy Moore out of the just like <laughs> getting Moore, running yeah. inter- shouting that with and continuing to check like his nails and his teeth the whole time um, to see that they're big and long. I would grab my travel sack before I okay. go, but that's all right. Yeah, um, I guess what I'm gonna say is um, sometimes when I'm playing, people go, "Wait, what? I have this," and I'm gonna say if it's not in your inventory now. You don't have it. Sometimes I let people roll to see if they remembered something, but I think you had to leave the village in a hurry. So you didn't have like a really kind of like, let's prepare for our expedition moment. You just took whatever was already in your pack. So can I um, grab the rope off the bed and give it back to Valdo? Uh, I think so. Sure. Great. It's um, disgusting. It's so I love a bloody rope. Blood. Yeah. Yeah. Please, please change it to gore uh, soaked rope. Gore saturated gore soaked rope. rope. And so now, um, is the plan to explore the mine or to do something else? Let me know, please, players. Um, well, I think that we should 
definitely wait isn't i mean like we just want to get to the tomb right to get the big ruby that tells lies yes <laughs> yes <laughs> um yeah so i will suggest we take the 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 mines like uh, judging by our, our overwhelming success traveling overland last time, what did you say we, we find relief in the cool recesses of the mines? Yes, because last time our friend Ian, uh, realized that there was a route that could be, uh, that yeah, Queen Natakris's mines. Yes, that there was a, um, there was a route via caves. Um, that he could use. So um, uh, if everybody's in agreement, because he's not wrong. Last time the overland route was tough on you. Well, we, didn't, true. we didn't know lions would be such a horrible foe. <laughs> um, yes, I... Um, let's go... Yes, let's go underground. Or if we want, we can Very do good. rock, paper, scissors to see if we go underground. You decide to go underground. And... Um, you have moved on for oh, unless do people really want to do rock paper scissors? <laughs> I'm okay with going underground. <laughs> okay, great. Um, you uh, you decide to go underground, and you're traveling uh, for a while. And uh, Ian leads you to this place where there's just kind of in the middle of the jungle. There's just like a kind of a a, a cliff face and on a hole leading down into the earth. And you can tell it's very cool, and it has that kind of like smell that caves have or it's very dank and like kind of smells like old stone that's gotten very kind of wet over the years uh because you are here in a um in a rainforest uh and so you descend into the caves and what i would like from Oof. everybody oh yes oh, sorry before we go in uh i think i would pitch that we that we sort of make a little camp and rest up seeing i'm i still only have the uh. six Hit points, and I would also I have um, some various books on Africa, and I definitely want to um, butch up on if there's any information on caves uh, in Africa in my books. I would certainly want to find that and read it before I get down there. That's so smart, and I think uh, absolutely you guys can do that. So, um, if you would like to rest, and if anybody would like to roll some further first aid on Ian Pembley, he can uh, he can get some more healing that. back. Yeah, I will also do that. I've got okay. my hunk Great. of wood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, don't. No, very well. Keep that away no, from no. my mouth. It's good. Just hold on. <gasps> I rolled a seven. Oh, that's an excellent success. So I'm going to let um, uh, good old uh, Ian Pembley have a full D4 of healing from that. And um, who cool, would I like to roll one. that? Oh, oh, you rolled a one. Okay. <laughs> no, I didn't. I don't want to roll. I was, I mistakenly <laughs> rolled. <laughs> it's too late. Yeah, um, I got a one. So You got a seven. one. And then you get a one for just resting overnight. So you get one for that. And let's see how Zach eight. did. How did, uh, how did uh, Faramore do? Badly. Okay. <laughs> And you can't use first aid on yourself, correct? You can. There's no like sort of bonus sure. for Ian for getting so far on the the low line for me with my seven. You're right. Well, the bonus was that I was letting you heal more than a first aid roll normally heals with a D4. Oh, okay. But, okay. but you know, uh, I, and you've already checked that skill, haven't you? Me? Yes, I've already checked it once. And my okay. lowest little thing there is nine. That's really cool. So you got an extreme success. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna see if he gets a little bonus here. You get two more bonus. All yes. right. So I'm at up to ten out of eleven. I failed my own, so that might be as good as it gets. Well, you guys are taking uh, Ian. Uh, you're taking care of Ian. You're really taking care of Ian. I imagine Ian with his feet up, you know, like in a bathrobe. <laughs> you guys are like waiting on him hand and foot uh Emily, as we... i'm telling you put this wood in your mouth i'm not feel, putting the wood in you'll my feel mouth so much more. better if you just put the wood in your mouth for a little bit mother always said wood in the mouth that's what it's about <laughs> uh what a strange mother you had and um you have these books on africa would you like to read about uh africa yeah yes uh, Af cave system Definitely. specifically yeah okay so um you can use library use if you'd like Okay. Um, to do that. I got an extreme success. Five under nine. Whoa. Uh, four that five. It is a, you can check that. Um, I'm crushing it. I can tell you that 
Um, these caves are filled with some of the largest and most aggressive bats in the world. Mm. Um, and that w- when you travel through uh, bat filled caves, it is the utmost uh, importance that you are extremely quiet because if you rouse them, they can swarm and uh, do a lot of damage. Um, uh, and then okay. beyond that, I'm going to allow you to ask a question because you got such a huge success and I will answer it. Uh, truthfully, you found something in your books that uh, is going to be very helpful to you, but I'm going to let you determine what that is. Oh, gosh. Um, it, it only mentioned the bats in terms of uh, uh, fauna. Well, you were looking at African caves. Yeah, and um, it did only mention the bats in terms of fauna. Um, oh, actually, you know what? It also says that there are legends of strange ape-like creatures leaving living deep in the caves of africa and some people refer to them as ghouls all right g-h-u-l uh, particularly uh, uh muslim uh, tribesmen uh refer to them as ghouls i guess my question would be i'm looking for a way to interpret geological features to ease the uh, navigating the caves in terms of like if i see water flowing in a certain direction what what that would mean um i just want to feel adept at uh navigating this cave system okay i like that i think it's fair so what i'm going to allow you to do is i was going to give you guys like climb rolls or like you know athletics rolls as you go down in here but i'm going to say since ian pembley nailed his research um he is very deftly kind of uh, he can very deftly tell you how to traverse this cave system and therefore you will not have to make those rolls, which could have cost you some time and some health. Um, and so um, uh, let me know when you are ready to enter right. I'm... the underground. So you're saying these bats do not like it when we're loud. Yes, we uh, must travel with the utmost quiet. No, and I guess I will, I will organize organized. my pack to, to make it as quiet as possible. And uh, I keep my rifle uh, wrapped up in that sort of canvas uh, blanket. I'll definitely try to to check check myself, uh, make sure. Excellent. Um, This is done. Um, And uh, and so the next day, uh, you descend into the cave system. And um, you have light. You have torches, I believe. Um, And it, it, it... among other things, it is breathtakingly beautiful. Um, you know, these vast cathedrals of stone that are just kind of formed of millions of colors deep within the earth. Um, you're all like very um, in awe of this strange otherworldly space you're traveling through. And then uh, at the end of maybe your first long uh, movement through these caves, you think it's going to take you up to maybe 10 hours to get uh, through the caves and into the mine, Natakris's mine at the top of the mountain. So after you've descended for a while, you're kind of moving up again through the caves and you come across something that I normally would have made you make some sort of roll to figure out what it is, but you did your research. So you come across guano, uh, bat droppings. It's all like a, a very thick kind of gray silt on the floor of this particular cave. You're in like a very large, uh, again, cathedral ceilinged cave that you're moving through. Uh, and Pembley, you can point that out to the others. Um, yeah, I think wordlessly, I would uh, look at it and point up and kind of make a flapping uh, motion. <laughs> and then like, I go, okay. And I'll kind of and like go, okay. show something flapping and like pooping and <laughs> oh, he goes. I'll sort of make an exaggerated tiptoeing walk, like uh, to show uh, how quiet we should be. Quincy goes, and then he pulls out two other pieces of wood and goes. <laughs> 
Okay, Quincy's probably not going to get it, but at least he's miming. Um, <laughs> let's do this. Um, it, this is obviously going to require a stealth roll to reverse this cave. And oh, by the way, uh, Pembley, when you point up uh, to the others, you see that the cave's ceiling is covered in uh, thousands of huge bats. These are big like fruit bat type creatures. Yes. Uh, and they're not flapping around right now. They're all very still and quiet. Did you say fruit bat? Down. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's probably biologically correct. Uh, with it's, the canon. Zoologist, it's canon. It's canon. canon. They don't eat people. They eat fruit. <laughs> yeah. yep. We're cool. We can make all the noise you want. Throw it. No, just kidding. The problem is not that they, uh, that they yeah. eat you. The problem is that they swarm and that can be extremely dangerous for you in these closed confines. So, um, so you're going to have to stealth through, but a group stealth roll is such a pain in the ass sometimes because some people are really good at it and some people are really bad. And so you're only as good as the worst person in your character party. Well, the way I'm going to do it, I'm borrowing something from a game called Blades in the Dark, which means uh, this. OK, uh, it's a really cool mechanic for group roles. Basically, the person who's the best at the skill can be the leader. The other two people also roll. And if they fail, they're going to make our leader lose sanity because they're being so stressed out from having to lead <laughs> these guys quietly okay. through. Okay. So that's how we're going to do it. So who is the stealthiest among you? Uh, if any of you are, I don't know if any of you have stealth skill. I've would, got you, 40. Would, would you believe I that I have 50 stealth? Oh, wow. I shall lead us that's on this wonderful. mission of stealth and sneaking. <laughs> okay, great. Um, wow. And, and Quincy's the guy that really shouldn't lose any more sanity because yeah. he's already lost i'm fine sure I'm sneaky, you are. like i That's might be a wolf but wolves are very sneaky very <laughs> so, quiet. so here here's what's happening quincy is now going he's about to make his stealth roll if he fails it the bats will be awakened and they will swarm attacking all of you um he's going to make his roll after uh and pembley and valda lebeau make their oh, rolls oh. Uh, so you said you had 40 uh stealth valda Give me your roll. Yeah. Oh, God. 40. Hey, nice work. Should okay. have let you lead, almost certainly. <laughs> um, okay, uh, so Valda did well. Yeah. Um, uh, I got a 67. I can't do anything about that. Um, you could push. Oh, that's right. Um, or you could even spend like 17 luck. Uh, if the limit were... is 10, right? Oh, that's right. I, I set a limit of 10. That's right. That's what. So, um, so yeah. Do you want to push it? You know, something really bad happens if you. Yeah, fail it the second I time. think I would put I would push it. Uh, OK, so how are you being quieter now? Um, I think I'd slow down. Maybe I'm kind of like panicky trying to keep up with very more involved. Uh, and so I'm just like, I, I you know, I'm not as coordinated and, and adept. So I just kind of like. I'm going to slow down. So uh, uh, Pembley is like now walking and this is the, the speeds of sweat are just dripping off of his face. And Pembley, you can hear the beads of sweat as they go plop onto the ground. And you're like, <laughs> oh, God. OK, so you're and going I think my mono my monocle, all the sweat is like dislodging my <laughs> monocle. And I'm trying to like keep it up on my face. <laughs> OK, <laughs> all right. All right, here we uh, so go. this is just another roll, correct? Right. All right. Oh God. You got it. Oh no. No. I got a fifty-seven over forty. I can't I can't luck out of that either. I'm afraid not. So um <laughs> this was a group roll. This was a group roll. Um, I can tell you that what just happened is that Pembley's monocle fell out of his eye and smashed on the ground. Okay. But this was a group role, and it was led by Quincy Ferrymore. So, Quincy, because of Ian's, uh, frankly, bullshit, you you now have to make your role. You now have to make your role at, at hard. If there is one more sound, these bats are going to swarm. You now need to make your role at 25% because of uh, Ian's mistake. Sounds Here fair. we go. That is a that is a failure. <laughs> um, <laughs> suddenly, the ceiling shifts 
and falls as thousands of screaming bats like fill the room. And I mean, there are so many of them, you can no longer see each other. And as they flash past you, I mean, like, have you ever had a bat like smash into your face while its wings are pumping and it's like biting and clawing? All the time. Yeah. It's Can't every it day. <laughs> it's every not, day it happens to me. It's not great. Can, so. can Valda fling to the floor and try to lay flat with her head I above dodged, her I also dodge the bat. Her, like, like so, just down on the ground, quickly. I love it. I He's love down. it. I love it. Dodge rolls from both of you. Dodge Actually, rolls. I had a different thing that I wanted to try first, but I'll do that. Sure. We were all, and also well, we were all holding torches, right? That's true. Zach, so I think if, I'm if, just flailing with my torch. If Quincy has something else you'd like to try, you, you can you can do that. What, I would yeah. like to smash the box of bees against the side of a wall. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, okay, man. let's see how uh, Valda, if you missed this dodge roll, you did not duck in I time. did not miss the dodge roll. I got a 30 under 52. Nice. You are the queen of the dice, uh, Valda. You um get down before the huge swarm of bats like flies down to your level and um uh, Quincy, a no skill roll needed to smash a box of bees. <laughs> um, so you smash <laughs> a box of bees against uh, a stalagmite and then fall um, flat. That's the maneuver. The idea is to make the bees fight the bats. <laughs> no, I yes. <laughs> so <laughs> you see what I'm getting at? There? The bees are gonna fight the bats. Yeah. Oh, we won't God. have to fight any of them. How do I adjudicate that's my what happens? Uh, oh, actually, that's correct. Thank you. Um, I so I never, I'm not trying to narc on the plan. You know, you're not narking on the plan. I think that I, I, I don't know if it's theater. helpful or worse. Make up our like, friends. I it's couldn't helpful. hear. What do you, you say? Them. You're hungry. I, it does feel helpful because what I think has happened is Faramore has smashed uh, like a smorgasbord for the bats like over in another area, right? Like he's like thrown this big box. It's yes, far, open, far away. And it's like kind of taking a bunch of <laughs> a so bunch smart. of stakes and throwing them to dogs, right? Suddenly exactly. all the bats like congregate on top of that. <laughs> and they're Go all like fighting bees. over the bees and they're ripping the bees to pieces and they're fighting over the bees. Um, so this gives you a moment to kind of get out of here before they're like swarming and filling the room again. Uh, what are you guys going to do? Uh, Vault is going to pick the torch up that she threw and um, look for the next room. Yes, the next the exit, the right? Okay, great. Um, Pembley, how how are you doing? Um, yeah, I think I as soon as the bats swarmed, I let out like a Wilhelm scream and was just like flailing <laughs> around with my torch. So like when they're suddenly gone, I'm just like stumbling around and I'll follow Valda. Uh, is my monocle, my cherished monocle broken? Did it smash on the cave floor? I am ruling that it has broken. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I will, uh, I will, um, uh, fumble my way, uh, after Valda. Out of the okay, room. great. Um, and um, uh, Ferrymore, uh, your box of bees ended up being weirdly ingenious again. Uh, Not stupid, weird. Stupidly smart. <laughs> um, so, because uh, bats definitely eat bugs, so that was a smart move. What are you? Uh, what are you doing now? Are you following them like out of this cave? Yeah. Ferrymore has learned that Valda is better at surviving than he is, so he he's running out. He's going to just copy what she does. We're he going was farther he was in, about to, right? We're not exiting. Right, going further okay, in. Cool. He was about to copy her and throw himself down on the ground, but then he had to throw the bees. Um, so <laughs> if she's running, he's running after her. Okay, you you. Here's what happens now. Um, you climb up out of this cave into like another chamber of this cave system, and you suddenly realize that far above you. There's light from the outside. And um, uh, Pembley, you may make a geology roll uh, because you are now looking into kind of like a, um, you're kind of looking into a pit. And this pit is like far above you is like a light to the outside. And then then there's like darkness and like a, a drop, like right ahead of you and, and going down below you. Well, now we have to decide if we're going up or down. Um, I don't see geology on my science list oh okay there it is yes science under geology all right oh i got a 20 under a 38 okay 
um, you can go ahead and check that. And I'll let you know that this mine or this this tomb has apparently been built into a non-active volcano, a long, long dormant and non-active volcano. And in fact, the place to go is down, but it will require climbing. Um, you have to climb down into this dark, uh, moldering and terrifying pit. So um, who would like to be the climb leader? And let's let's run another uh, skill check <laughs> like we just did and see if it goes a little better. Oh, boy. Well, I have a 45 in climb and I have sturdy hiking boots mm. and climbing gear and rope. Sounds like maybe our out. leader for this will be Valda. And Valda, if you're using all your stuff, I might give you little bonuses as long as these guys don't screw it up for you. So um, you start to, uh, if, you, if you're ready to go down to the pit, is everybody going to give it a shot? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah well, so, absolutely. Uh, Valda, you set up all your climbing gear. You get everybody kind of roped together. Uh, and it's time to kind of rappel down into this dark moldering grave in the mountain. Uh, and first, we're going to see how your companions do. So what is your climb skill at Ian Pembley? 20. Okay. So just like last time, if your companions fail, you're going to take damage in the form of sanity, like you're stressing out over having to lead them, Valda. Um, last time, there was a gigantic accident, and that ended up not being necessary. But this time, let's see how it goes. So go ahead and give that climb roll, Ian Pembley. Come on. Oh my gosh, I got a three. Uh, yeah, I think so. Oh, yeah. That's, that's under, that's that's under my back. extreme. Yeah. Check it. Um, your climb can get better in a little bit, maybe. And uh, Quincy Ferrymore. At uh, some point, I will have to do something well today. So let's see if that's not. <laughs> you already say, you saved us with the bees. The I think you just bees. saved you. Well, the bees was a good thing I did last time that I cashed in now. <laughs> I had to choose between bees and bad water, and I chose the correct. Well, and last time you booby trapped all those bodies. Yeah. Yes, you're all right. Yes, I did. You I saved us. No we one better than me. Than a Surely I can climb very well. I've done an extremely bad job of climbing. <laughs> I rolled. I rolled a ninety-one. In the no climb. problem. Oh no. No problem. So. I'm going to rule that you're going to lose just a little bit of sanity, uh, my friend Valda. You're going to lose two sanity I'm gonna from say having to Quincy having to keeps giving bad advice on how to climb. Yeah. The thing about climbing is you have to <laughs> you have to kick your feet into the wall really hard, <laughs> and you want to sort of push back. So you do a fun, like swingy, bouncy thing all the way down. That's yes. how we learn to climb. So Quincy is swinging around and making it very difficult for you, Valda. And uh, now comes your role. And if you succeed, okay. you will have gotten them safely and quietly to the bottom. If you fail, all of you are falling. Oh. <laughs> okay. And, and what is this extra that you're giving me for having all of this climbing gear? Uh, that's a good point. Uh, you did say okay. that. Yeah, but then that was before Quincy got a 90 on his... Uh, <laughs> but I would like to counter that with how well Ian Pimbley succeeded. It was an extreme success. Uh, that's I also a very, didn't have to very tell good you point. how bad I failed. I yeah. gave that to you. A very, very I'm really point. just like a koala on this on this wall. Okay, I, 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 you're, you're right, but I feel like... Maybe okay. just a five, think, extra five percent at least. No, I'm going to give you the bonus die. I'm going to give you the bonus die because I did say that I, uh, you know, you have good climbing gear, and uh, Ian's critical success uh, counteracts uh, Ferrymore's critical fail. Yeah, so, so I see him climbing, and I'm like, hmm, maybe, maybe I need to question everything about the way I've learned to climb. I don't know <laughs> that I'm wrong, but I'm not sure that I'm right. <laughs> Here we go with a bonus die. How'd you You're do, going to Love Twitter, Ferrymore. Wait, so what does that mean when I get a bonus die? You get to do it you twice. Mean, you get to roll right. twice and take the better roll. You can take the best of the two? Yeah, roll the tens uh, twice. You don't have to roll the, the ones twice. And you have a 45 climb, is that right? Yes. Okay, what did you roll the first time? Uh, a 66. Okay, what did you the roll the second time? time? A 49. Okay. So I can take some luck points, right? I think I'm, that you better, yeah. And not have us fall to our death into a dormant volcano. Absolutely. <laughs> what if you did it, though? Oh, yes. Hold on. Counterpoint. 
<laughs> well, I mean, it's always fun. It's always fun to see what happens when just failure happens. I've but... got some scratch tickets I want to buy, and I'm not yeah. wasting this luck. Maybe there's okay. a, maybe there's a pool of like good lava at the bottom to catch us that we'll splash into. You you guys, um, uh, uh, Valda barely catches you as you kind of slide down a long distance, but she you know finally gets her like climbing uh, claw back into the side of the inside of this a volcano, and now you find that you are hanging only ten feet over the center of a kind of a, a, a circular room, and in the the middle of this room is dominated by an enormous honeycomb. Um, and there is an enormous hive of bees like here, like in the inside the volcano. And you can see now that they can fly all the way up out that like skylight way overhead. And this room is so filled with bees in this enormous honeycomb that getting across it to the uh, cave you can see on the other side is going to be somewhat difficult. Um, Don't worry. I have a plan. <laughs> can uh, oh no, uh, I can wait not for Perry. You, no, 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 Pembley. What were you going to say? Can yeah. I? Um, you could tell me what to roll for this, or if it, it was just something I came across in the book. Uh, I don't want to just say that I would know this, but is there some way I could know that smoke pacifies bees? Because as it so happens, I happen to have a pouch of tobacco on me and a torch. I have cigarettes. Pemley, and... that's exactly what I was going to say. Let's <laughs> use our torches and make a bunch of smoke. Smoke all these bloody bees and walk to the other side. Um, well done. I think that you don't have to roll anything, but if you want to do this perfectly, like if you want to use smoke the way you use it to kind of pacify them, like and really kind of get them all to kind of lay down and, and let you pass through, I would like just a natural world roll from one of you. Um, and who has a natural world skill? I assume that I do. I have a I have 50. 50. I have 50. Baldus too. got the hot dice. Oh, yeah, but this is your idea. Mm hmm. Oh uh, no! You should do it. I'm bad yeah, at I, it. I could. I could. <laughs> I love that Fairy Moore is a big game hunter with not good natural world skill. <laughs> That's not my fault. You made this character. Sweet. What are you talking about? I I don't, uh, I'm taking my uh, um, visual out for a second. Okay. Um, yes. So are you going to give it a shot, Pembley? Yes. I think I would go as low as I could to the to to the bees. Um, the plan would be to maybe drop a lit torch and then sort of like pour tobacco on oh yeah yeah okay and make a yeah. little, like smoldering pile of tobacco. so what's your natural world skill uh i will also use pages from those books if i need to uh my <laughs> skill is a 50 and i got no i got a 79 oh <laughs> the dice are not your friend push? today oh, I can i'm gonna push. You can push it. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you I'll can push. push it. Do you want to push? I want that ruby. Okay. I'll push every roll I have. So I here's what's happening. You are having to use pages from your books. Your your beautiful library is being destroyed as you throw the pages onto uh, this fire, and uh, you can roll again. All right. Oh, I got a seven. Woo! There you go. Uh, <laughs> Finally, you see the bees like all start to kind of go back into the honeycomb. And like if they're out in the room, they just kind of land on like the, the rocks and they kind of move a lot more slowly. And now you can move through the rocks. Can I uh, also yes. equip a second box of bees? <laughs> um, <laughs> let me see if I have because you said we don't have anything that we didn't already have because we had to left, leave fast. So I have a huge trunk. <laughs> but there's no way I'm bringing I think that, your right? huge trunk didn't yeah. come with you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I have. I'm gonna call. I, I have a sense. tent. I have a backpack which ostensibly is carrying things. I guess I'll ask. I could have a canteen full of bees. Um, uh, I will allow you if you would like to have a canteen full of bees, but you must pour <laughs> out the water. Um, I'll ask my friend. Do either of you have a box to put these <laughs> bees in? I have. Uh... I don't think I have anything that would be be tight, as they say. I uh, have formal clothes. Yeah. <laughs> Our formal um, clothes, a house for bees. I have um, a belt with pouches, but I, I feel mm. like they'd crawl out of the pouches. I don't think that 
No, I just don't. Yeah, I don't think. All right. Uh, I, I guess the Fairy time Moore for making cries a tear and looks back at the bees and says, <laughs> "I'm sorry, I didn't have a box when you needed me to, bees. Another day." <laughs> and he continues on. Um, beautiful. You guys move uh, through this chamber. Uh, the bees do not uh, rise up and sting you to death, um, and uh, you come into what is definitely a worked hallway worked stone um that has been fitted together and uh there are two this hallway goes uh, many feet uh, uh deep into this volcano um into the side of it and um it's kind of unbelievable that there is any sort of kind of um structure here at all but you did know that that's what you were coming and what you were looking for and i can tell you in this hallway you see two things you see glyphs and pictograms on the wall and you also see large clay jars that are um a little taller than a person they're like about seven feet tall <laughs> um and they're kind of just lined up along the hallway and then in between them you can see that the wall has been beautifully painted that your torchlight shows the hall has been beautifully painted with weird glyphs um, um can i do an archaeology roll on this hallway you may i got a 27 under 50, uh, 60. Oh, that's really good, and I'm going to go ahead and allow you to check it because um, this is what you learn. Um, so the glyphs uh, depict uh, people and things that look like people, uh, and what you uh, are able to interpret, Ian Pembley, that there are priests and there are workers depicted in these glyphs. The workers, it's a timeline, too. like the, the, It's a story that moves through history. The workers built this temple, and then the priests sacrificed all of the workers and sealed them in the urns and filled them with honey. And then later, the priests, which look like different types of creatures now, are opening the urns and eating the workers. Please make a sanity roll. Hmm. <laughs> All of us. Uh, all, all of us? I got a no, only Ian Pembley. A 22 under 60. Whoa. Then you lose nothing. Um, but um, uh, I think I would d describe that in the least sanity taxing way possible to my companions. And I'll treat it with a healthy. Um, I think despite seeing Quentin's <laughs> change in those baboons, I, you know, Pembley's still kind of like. Uh, once, once more explanations for he would. So you're saying these, these big things all have honey in them. Well, it would seem that way, and, and perhaps bodies. Um, are they corked at all? Can right. I, yes, I, sorry, I honey and sure. bodies. I forgot about that part. Honey and bodies in the big things. They are corked. They uh, they have like these heavy lids on them, um, and the the lids are you know it, the, these are big tall jars, and they remind you of the canopic jars of uh, ancient uh, Egypt. They are sealed in a black wax. So I just want to make sure I understood this story correctly. The workers built this place. They were then tell it, sacrificed. Tell it to me. Tell They're, it to me. I want to understand it. Yeah, I'll kind of like be working out loud. They're, and then their bodies were put in these jars with honey. And then in these, okay. By the very priests who were then transformed. So it would seem these jars are a power source of sorts for these priests. The priests eat the honey. Reanimating right? dead bodies. I don't, wait, did I miss a part? When did they reanimate the dead bodies? See, I think that these are all dead bodies that have been placed inside of these honey something. There's something about this honey. There's something about the bees and the other room and the magical honey that they're promoting or pr creating or whatever that word is. And, there, and that's... There were bees in that's the That's how room. your brother was yeah. still alive. And that's what he meant by he is indestructible. This is magic honey. But then we shot him in the head with a gun. And now he's dead in a big pile. So, so everybody makes a listen roll. Everybody needs to make a listen roll. 
Zach has made his first good roll of the day. Oh, I scraped by 34 under 35. Oh, oh, oh. oh I. Oh, it wasn't enough. 98 under have... 25. <laughs> I did a 22 over 20. Okay. Um, uh, I wouldn't bother because you did have someone who, who got it. So I think I, I wouldn't bother like using luck or anything. Um, basically, um, you guys are all kind of uh, discussing what this could possibly mean when you hear like footsteps out in the chamber you were in before the B chamber. Ian Pembley does. Yes. Okay. Uh, I'll be, I'll like motion back. Quite, quite. Someone's coming. Hide behind these jars. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. it's very dark. Are you putting out your torches? Uh, yes. yes, I will snuff out. I will snuff out my torches. And I have torches. dark vision, so it's yeah. fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know that you do. Quincy Ferrymore has it dark will be. vision. <laughs> Without the torches, will it be pitch black? There's no... It will be pitch black, except there will be a little light out in that other chamber, because remember, there's like a... There's like the opening of the, the aperture of the volcano is out there. Uh, yes, oh, I will, um... I don't know what the other two will do, but I'll duck down behind a jar and I will snuff out my torch. Yeah, I'll put it out. Quincy knows how to hunt animals Same. in the dark. You don't have a big torch with you. Um, a uh, you 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 can make a spot hidden roll at first. That's what I want you to do first. I found a box to put bees inside. Twenty-eight 30. under thirty. Eighteen under. 45 so that's okay that's a that's a hard everybody made it so here's what i'm going to tell you that you see just uh, you you're looking around the side of the jar and you're looking out into that chamber with the honeycomb and there's just a little bit of gray light out there from the skylight way overhead and you're looking through and you see a creature and it's got like a huge, you know, snout and it's like moving like an ape and it's shirtless and it's got long hair caked with mud and part of its face is missing and part of its shoulder is missing. And you can see like the skeleton underneath uh, and it looks very familiar. Yes, even though he was blown to bits, your brother was right. I knew it. You didn't kill him. He's still moving about, and he's here in the complex with you. Everybody make a sanity roll. Ooh, I got a five. I'm really handling my God shit. damn it. I got a 73, but mine is 67. Can I use luck? Uh, you can't on a sanity roll. I got a 51 over 40. Okay, so um, here is the sanity loss for Quincy and for Valda at seeing this guy who you definitely blew to smithereens like crawling around and now you can hear him snuffling and kind of crawling toward where all of you hide in the darkness. Valda, you lose only one sanity. Quincy, you oh, lose. God. Oh, God, I'm so sorry, Quincy. <laughs> you have lost five sanity you go temporarily insane again and you um are going to do something rash and horrible that is going to reveal everyone's location yes um, oh, i'm going to shoot him in the head again um okay uh yeah you probably are although it is now pitch black in the hallway that you're in so you can give me an extreme uh firearms roll uh to try to do that uh, and, um, mm -hmm. I also want to say that your sanity, your insanity has to do something, has to have something to do with you thinking you're also going to turn into this thing because you watched your own brother turn into a, uh, zombie baboon creature and it's mm. not cool. Okay. Um, oh, dang it. No, fail that. Okay. Boom! Like suddenly the chamber lights up for a second and you just see it light up long enough to see the creature go ah, and like leap at Quincy Farrimore. And now we are in a combat situation in a pitch black hallway deep within the earth with a uh, ravenous ghoul. Um, so um, let's see. Uh, who is going to be firing guns this coming round? Um, I will fire guns again. Um, you do you need time to reload? I have two guns. <laughs> That's right. Okay, great. So Quincy will be firing a gun again. And uh, what are you going to do, Ian Pembley? I mean, this is horrible, but in character, <laughs> Ian Pembley is so obsessed with that ruby that I think 
if I feel like I'm hidden behind this jar in the dark, that I will stay uh, hiding where I am. Very good. And Valda LeBeau, what will you do? Um, can Valda um, light a torch and throw it in front of her to sort of create a light source towards the direction of the creature? Uh, absolutely she can yeah that's that's uh that's actually a really smart move so we will start with uh the no quincy opening up with his other gun and then we'll go to uh the other two here um so go ahead quincy um let me have uh this is gonna be uh, i think you just got a flash of your brother like where he's at where the creature is so you can now do it at just hard difficulty your firearms attack oh is that all mm. Hmm. Uh, I succeed that. Oh, great. <gasps> and now give me your damage, please. Great. Three. <laughs> Three. Okay. Okay. No problem. Okay. So uh, here we go. Um, uh, Quentin Faramore takes another blast. And I think that what happens is, I mean, this is a ball from like a, a flintlock. He goes skidding down the hallway again. You hear him wetly smashing against some of those jars. You hear them kind of like toppling and crashing. And then it's pitch black again. And then it is Valda LeBeau's turn. And Valda, I'm not going to make you roll or anything. You're lighting that torch, right? Yes. Okay, you light the torch, and when you lift it up, now the hallway is lit with that orange glow, and you can see, like, he's under some jars, but he's, like, getting back up, Quincy Faramore, and he's like, <sighs> um, and then it is uh, Ian Pembley's turn, and Ian is going to hide. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ian, um, no need for a stealth roll right now because I don't think that the creature's attention is on you at all. We are going to start a new round. I'm going to rule that my uh, my friend Quentin Ferrymore is spending the turn getting these like jars off of him. And um, as this is his action, he with a tremendous amount of strength pushes one of the jars off of him. It shatters, and you see like a thousand year old like mummy like slide out in a like a, a big wave of honey like um and uh so all of these jars are filled with bodies it's how they're preserving honey's a great preservative the does body he, does he react to that at all like the body or the honey or any of it you know what he very well might but right now i want to ask you uh because he'll get an action this coming round but right now i want to ask you what you guys are going to do this round so quincy Ferrymore, what are you going to do well that's what i was trying to, to determine like if these things are gonna make him stronger or if they can be used as a weapon against him i think he's like under a thing He's, he's like he's pushed it off now. I've decided he's pushed it off, uh, and this this urn has smashed open in front of him, and a body coated in honey has slid out. Um, if you'd like to observe him and like react when he do does something, that's a fine that's a fine action for for the round. Uh, that's like a smart thing to do though, and that's not really <laughs> how I roll. Yeah, um, I'm gonna Can go I try up to shoot him. Yeah, let me just uh, – you'll probably go first then, um, Valda, but let me just hear out Quincy here. What are you going to do? When it says when, – sorry. When it, when it says damage bonus in combat, what does that mean? It means that anytime you do a hand-to-hand -hand attack with a knife, a sword, or your fist, you add that much damage. I'm going to go kick him in the head and then punch him in the head. Okay, great. Um, and then Valda, are well, you – Well, because I think I'm a wolf, right? Yeah, I'm going to try to go wolf attack him now. With wolf skills. I love that. I love that. And it is insane. So you are following your temporary insanity problem. Valdo, what would you like to do? You wanna you're gonna shoot him? I think so. Okay. And with yes. your flintlock? I'm shoot him. With your handgun? Yep. Okay, yep. great. Valdo's got the torch lit. She threw it ahead of her so she can see it. So she's gonna go first. But wait, Ian Pembley, what are you going to do? Um, well, now that the hallway is is somewhat illuminated and I would feel my odds of just sort of uh hiding and and writing it out are are lessened i will also try to shoot at the the creature great okay so um let's start with valda valda you blast with your uh flintlock how does it go she misses 
Okay. Um, Valda's uh, ball hits another urn. It smashes open and another body like slides out coated in honey. And then it's Ian Kemble's turn to fire his gun. I got a 30 under 40. Ian Pembley, you uh, blast the creature right in the chest. And how much damage do you do? 10 damage. Whoa. 10 damage. damage, baby. Okay. So, um, the again, you, you just keep killing this guy. Uh, the monster falls down into the honey and, like, seems inert. But I think that we have to go. I think Quincy still does this because he's temporarily insane. Unless you have another. Do you think he would change his action at this point? If he fell down on the ground, yeah, I think I would like pin him like a wolf and like snarl in his face. Okay, yeah, you do that. Um, you run up and you're on top of him and you're like snarling in his face. And even as you watch, like this body that has like a huge pieces out of its head and its chest is reaching for one of the dead bodies. It's reaching to 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 touch the hand. Of oh one yeah, of I try to, I try to pin that down. Okay, you're trying to pin him? Give me a brawling roll. Give me a fighting brawl roll. Gotta have an advantage against the one who just got shot in the chest. Um, No, I did badly. I did 70 over 40. Okay. Um, The uh, evil creature pulls forward one of the arms of the mummies and starts to like gnaw on it i try to switch it with the wood that i have <laughs> i'm gonna put wood in his mouth instead well we're gonna see what that. everybody's action is gonna be this round. <laughs> that's so, mine for sure trying to <laughs> shove wood into his mouth um uh, valda what are you going to do this round um this time valda is going to um run up and try to uh chop his arms off Okay, great. I love that. Yes. Pimbley, what are you going to do? Can I say, as a as a character note, part of Ian Pimbley's weaseling, greasy ways, especially to get money to finance his expeditions, is to go golfing with, uh, <laughs> like wealthy, uh, wealthy people. Like, I'll just go. I'll do a bit of golfing. Uh, can I can I retcon that into my? character i don't see how i could stop you yes Great. absolutely then i will t- to take my pry bar out of my pack and i'm going to try to chip chip, shot? <laughs> chip the uh chunk of this mummy's body out of um so good this creature's hand because i know that that's why he's doing that okay here and, and and the creature is going to try to consume more of this corpse to what end what does it all mean perhaps you will find out or not who cares the point is right now our <laughs> highest dexterity character which i believe is valda lebeau uh what's your dexterity valda 65 and then i have a 60 for fairy more is that right absolutely not oh what is your what is your dexterity? Was 50 and then last chance i last session it got lowered to 45 <laughs> it's back up to 50 okay and then what is your dexterity oh, no, 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 no. Uh, sorry it got uh, permanently lowered from aging oh that's yeah. right yes it's at 45 thank you thank you for being honest you're welcome and uh mr Pembley, what's your 60 60 okay so valda you can go first run up and give me a fighting uh a fighting roll with your machete i got a 35 under a 55 you chop off one of his arms, the one that was like kind of pulling the dead Reach, body to yeah. him. And then yes. uh, and then it is now uh, Ian Pembley's turn. Ian, you come up with your pry bar in you for Give me a <laughs> fighting uh, brawl roll with your pry bar. Uh oh. Come on. What were you going to use? On. What were you going to use instead? Did you have something else in mind? No, no. That was, I knew that it was going to be. Yeah. I was hoping there was like a golf skill. Golf? There's there so golf? many skills here. Yeah. <laughs> Oh no! I got an eighty-six over twenty-five. Okay, so um, all I all that means I think is that you're just like kind of ineffectually like ah ah, ah like batting <laughs> at it with your pry bar, and now it's Quincy Ferrymore's turn and to Quincy, put wood in his mouth. Yes, so that's a little tougher than just like hitting somebody with a sword or or a pry bar. So um, it- if ah, but you're close <laughs> up. Yeah, you know what? Just give me a fighting brawl roll. 74 over 40. 
Man, uh, if, if rolls that were high were good, I would be absolutely crushing it this game. <laughs> you um you fail to get the wood into his Put mouth, my and hand then in his mouth he and does this. Yes, he does. He um reach forward, he he reaches his head forward, his fangs glisten in the torchlight, and Quincy he bites into your neck. Oh rude. Uh you take Wait, let me find out how much damage you take from that. Like this lion all over again. Mm -hmm. Okay. If honey has natural antibiotic properties. Probably won't be uh, the dirtiest wound. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's go. not going to be a great wound. <laughs> okay. You only take three damage. Okay. Um, Ooh. Um, and uh, you, but you now have like this, like big nasty looking bite in your neck as well so um uh i can tell you that the guy that uh, valda has chopped one arm off of is not doing so hot uh but he did get that final attack in on you but i mean i know that ian is like sort of ineffectually bashing at him but you 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 guys have triple teamed him so uh at this point like the combat is over but you have to just tell me what you'd like to, to do it looks like apparently this creature can heal from full death so how are you going to handle that now i would like to burn him with the torch that valda threw on the ground um, perhaps, if, 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 perhaps if, if, i might also maybe destroy the bodies that are in all of this oh honey? yes for sure let's melt all of these bodies mm -hmm. let's open okay. every and single perhaps... cask put them in a big pile and light them all on fire as, as macabre as it sounds, we might use uh, Volda's machete and uh, take your brother into a bit more manageable pieces that we might spread mm -hmm. spread apart. Separate them, bury them in different areas of the room. We'll hide them across the world as a fun challenge. <laughs> we'll okay. cut them into seven pieces. But yeah, I think we, I would like, to, I think burning every single one of these like mummies in these, like pushing over the remaining honey casks and mm -hmm. sort of like lighting all this up would be good yeah okay so is there any sort of like uh t like like is there anything that is putting the honey inside of these giant like t honey tombs or um, anything it, is there you don't see any like giant apparatus that's doing it you don't see um and uh, all appearances you know based on uh, our friend's archaeology role it was done a very long time ago um, gotcha. uh, for most of these, at least the ones that you can see right here in this hallway. So, uh -oh. um, I hear you, you're going to chop Quentin, your own brother into yes. pieces and you're going to burn the pieces and then you're going to just smash all these jars and disfigure the bodies. I want an archeology span roll from Ian Pembley and I want a luck roll from Quentin. Oh, I'm sorry. Quincy Ferrymore. I got a ooh, a good one. A nineteen under sixty. Remind oh, yeah. me. Luck, do you want over or under? I want uh under. I yeah, failed. I that. Want, okay, you failed it. Okay. So um <laughs> eighty eight over. As 50. you are smashing no. open the as you're smashing open the jars. No, no, no. I'm gonna tell you what happens. <laughs> as you're smashing open the jars, uh Quincy, um, some of the honey splatters onto the wound on your neck. And you realize, like, when you touch it again in a moment, that the bite is gone. Uh, but <laughs> you feel strange. Magic, honey. Look, I got I it on my neck. I got it on my neck where I got. But remember when stay, I got bit. Stay back, fairy more. Stay back. Um, right, your archaeology role tells you, uh, Mr. Pembley, that you guys are currently engaged in destroying a monumental find. Like, you uh, are cheating yourself out of not just money but uh in tremendous international renown if you destroy these bodies are you going to go ahead and continue to do it i mean i think i that ruby is more like sure having my name in the journal is 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 great but having a ruby the size of a basketball uh is is even greater um Gosh, I don't know. That's a hard. That's a hard question. Do you I bring certainly it up, do you know. Bring, do you bring it up to the group? Because Quincy has a thought. Um, Valda has thoughts. Yeah, I was. I, I was actually going to ask. Maybe, and I can do this. What I'm thinking, if I could do it, either a natural world role or an occult role, 
on this honey, especially after I saw it um, uh, heal Fairy Moore's wound. So I know that consuming the bodies will transform you into a super lichen baboon. Yeah. But <laughs> I'm curious of what I'm more interested in the properties of the honey itself that has been uh, infused with these corpses. Uh, very good. Then if you'd like, you can give me a hard occult roll. Uh -oh. um, or uh, what What were you going to suggest? Were you going to suggest either a, a natural world or occult? But I think occult probably makes the most sense. Did I heal I any hit points when I ate the honey? When the honey you got sure on did. Neck? You Yes, you surely did. You healed. Three hit points. I feel um, perfect. And I'd also like to inspect, I mean, with his permission, fairy more like I, you know, hold up a torch and I want to like check his eyes and I want to look at his teeth. And I go, um, <laughs> just kidding, <laughs> you stupid bastard. I feel fine. I failed my occult roll badly. Um, 90 over 35. Well, it's not going to stop you from, um, doing things with the honey if you'd like um you just don't know exactly how this uh, unbelievable sorcery is working and pembley may not even even put together that it was the honey that healed quincy Ferrymore just now hmm. um but i know i know that these monsters like eating these bodies and that mm -hmm. having these around uh, resulting in monsters i think um I got eyes on that ruby. I will be okay with burning these bodies. Um, the last I, thing, and I guess I will. Yeah, I'll say I'll kind of voice my my concerns to Valda and Fairymore. Yes, I agree with burning the honey, but I uh, burning the bodies. But this honey, I think, is great. And I dump out my canteen and I fill it with honey. And I for that uh, the canteen of bees. The, I didn't put the bees in the he never oh, got okay. the bees I in about it. it. So now you have a canteen full of magical honey. Um, that's something that definitely needs to go on to an inventory. Um, and I'm going to tell you that the last thing you burn is one of Quentin's hands and its claws. It's like it's like wolf-like claws, like clutching the air as you finally put the torch to it and reduce it to ash. Um, there is a hallway stretching before you deeper into the mountain. Would you like to explore more of Natocris's mine? So Quentin has been reduced to ash, correct? And yes, you took okay, you said you you described to me that you cut his body into pieces and then you burned it down to ash. And right? we burned we burned all the other bad mummies, right? We knocked over all the jars and burned them. Yes, you've created an, a giant pile of <laughs> ash body out in the honeycomb chamber where the bees were subdued. So um, you have uh, smashed this entire temple to pieces, uh, but you haven't explored farther ahead in the uh, in the tomb. Well, I feel right as right. Let's keep going. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, as we go, I'm going to like say in a, a, a conspirat conspiratorial whisper to Valda, like, let's keep our eyes on Fairy Ball. Let him walk. Yes. Let him walk a ways ahead. That's a very good idea. <laughs> a fairy more. Um, a oh, fairy go ahead. good idea. <laughs> funny. Worth saying. <laughs> um, Fairy Moore, you need to give me a constitution roll. Over or under? You're trying to get under. This time I did it. <laughs> this time it's it. a hard success. Okay, Fairy Moore. Um, you got, uh, Valda, uh, Ian Pembley says keep an eye on Fairy Moore. But when you look at uh, Fairy Moore, he looks like his old self. Uh, he looks like a, a normal a normal fellow. Um right. You finally come to the end of the corridor and it opens into a small chamber where you find a stone idol worn and impossibly old. It has a jackal's head and a man's body and the statue is holding forth a scale. And nothing is in the scale? Nothing is in the scale, but you can examine this chamber and this statue as much as you'd like. Great. I can tell you, Ooh, yes. Nice. I can tell you that. Is that Anubis? What's um, that one? Yeah, uh, yeah I'll do an archaeology. Archaeology roll. Yeah. Oh, great. Can I push my archaeology roll? You certainly could if you'd like. Yeah. I got a 77 over 60. Oh, and I got even worse. I got an 83 over 60. Okay. So um, 
you believe, Ian Pembley, that the only way to the only way to get this statue to interact correctly uh, is with a human heart. You need to put a human heart on the scale because Anubis weighed the hearts that were going to enter the afterlife. And so now you're like looking, I mean, I don't know how greedy Ian Pembley is, but he's looking over at his companions uh, who have human hearts. <laughs> and like, let's keep in mind, you've burned all the bodies out in the previous chamber. Um, so uh, that's what you see <laughs> from that. Um, people can call for other roles. The chamber is not very large. It's only about uh, 25 feet across and it's got a low ceiling, only about um, like nine feet high. I just want to search it real good to see if there's anything like hidden here. Yeah, give me a spot hidden roll. That is a, a one point over. Oh, no. Oh, no. One point over a hard success, but that's a success. Okay. Yeah, you uh, search it and you realize that the um, base of the statue... Um, there's uh, you can just kind of barely see uh, under the old wood that the scale is connected to a very delicate pulley system of some sort that goes into some mechanical guts down in the uh, down in the uh, floor of the chamber. It's a machine. Look, <laughs> it's got bits that go up and down. And there's a part here and that part's a machine and it's connected to this bit. That's also a machine. Um, I'll take a look at that. There's no way to really interact with the the bits. They go down I just into the push floor. On the, I just push on the scale, like with increasing pressure to see what happens. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, <laughs> Something uh, really suddenly good. <laughs> the wheels that can be seen under the statue's base, if you kind of look into the crack, start turning rapidly and See? suddenly the entire floor of the chamber starts dropping and um unless unless uh someone succeeds in a roll to stop this from happening right now and it, you get one chance the floor is going to drop completely out like basically it's made so that when you put pressure on the scale the floor lowers and if you put the right amount of pressure it only lowers a little bit but uh, what Perry Moore has just done is gone all the weight. What does that do? No, I, said I, put, I said I put in slightly, slowly increasing amounts of pressure on the scale. Unless you want me to just slam it, in that case, I'll just slam it. No, no, no. You, you, you. Thank you for. Is this a survival for, throw? Yeah, I don't think it would be survival. I think it would be something like you're wedging something in the gears, or you're jumping out, you know, onto the statue as the floor goes down, or. A, but I'm gonna let you tell me what you think you would do. A mechanical repair roll, slapping Fairy Moore's hand away with a fighting roll, all of those might work. Oh, uh, could I could I toss Valda my pry bar and uh, and I just go like throw throw that in the gears. Uh, you could do that. Um, and uh, let's see, since it's like a two person job here, you have to tell her what to do. Give me like a, uh, give me a, oh, how are you doing? Let, uh, let, 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 let's just have you throw it to Valda and have her make a roll. Valda, do you want to try what uh, Ian Pembley's telling you to do? Or do you just let his pry bar go flying <laughs> past you? No, no, no. I grab it and I do exactly what he tells me to do. Um, okay. And then... What is that like a dexterity roll? I think it's a dexterity roll. Yes, go for it. I dodge. No, just kidding. <laughs> Fine. Yeah, I got a twenty-three, and my dexterity is sixty-five. It's under the thirty-two thing, right? Uh, you, you guys are like sliding past the turning gears, and Valda like reaches up and tong, sticks the pry bar into them, and suddenly everything <laughs> stops. And now you can see the chamber that would have been opened up when you went down the proper amount and it's like up there <laughs> so, but the floor didn't like completely fall down into the cavern so look we did it up. yeah yeah we perfectly we solved the robot <laughs> fair thing <laughs> you're welcome um <laughs> so there it is um you want to take I, your time? oh yeah oh can i say as we were walking in this room or whatever that I would have reloaded my rifle again, or else I'll just fair. stop and do it right now. Okay. No, I, I think it's fair. Yeah. No Great. problem. Um, 
Hmm. Well, I don't have any way to get up there. Well, I happen to have climbing gear, rope, and climbing boots. <laughs> and I know the proper way to climb. Yes. Um, don't bother making rolls, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I think that we've proven that uh, you could handle this short distance. And so you eventually climb up into this chamber. And it's almost identical to the chamber you uh, were just in. It, it's small. It has a statue in the center. But this statue doesn't depict Anubis. It, it depicts some other type of god. It vaguely has the Anubis head, but like it's got tendrils of shadow carved in this kind of uncanny way around it and spiraling out from it in every direction. If you were a person of the following century, you would say this is some sort of vile type of abstract expressionism, but you live in the 1850s and you've never seen anything quite like this and you are unnerved by it. But the most important part is that in the center of the statue, two clawed hands are holding an enormous gleaming ruby. Now, if I was a betting man, I would say that's Natakris with the stone that lies. So, um, what would you like to do? I After the, the trap that we just sprang, I think I would like to inspect the statue before I, I touch it and I'll kind of like wave fairy more back. I'm like, fairy, more, fairy more. Let, me, let me examine it before you go. Well, I will just stand over here and hold him until you are done it. examining it. Yes, put wood in its mouth. The statue. <laughs> See if it will do a thing. Now, um, my, bro my brother touched that eye and it told him he would live forever and then we lit him on fire and now he's gone. Although he did sort of almost live forever for a while. But I think that gem might be bad because my brother... There was something different about him than the last time I saw him, and I can't put my finger on what it was. I'm not sure what eating that fermented honey did for you, brother, but this this gem is simply a, a jewel and a, a magnificent specimen. Uh, now, hold on, Pembley. You remember when my brother, the horrible, weird wolf man, tried to eat us multiple times, yes? Yes, but he's simply... It just this is mind and corroded living in this cave. I'm not saying let's not take the big ruby and get rich off of it. I'm saying let's not touch it with our fleshy hands. Yes, yes. Let me. Well, let me just inspect inspect the statue. Very um, good. Um, can what I do are a you spot using? hidden? Yeah, you may. Mm -hmm. Go for it. What is your spot hidden? Uh, it is sixty, and I got a twenty. Very good. Um. In this case, it does not appear to be trapped. You're you're pretty sure. There's no mechanical uh, device connected to this statue. Um, it, it looks like it's just sitting there on this little pedestal, uh, ripe for the taking. And in fact, um, you you see that there are um, there are fingerprints on it. Now hold on. You Is said there anything else in the room? It's very small, and there is um, uh, nothing else that you can see, but would you like to kind of look around with a spot hidden? Mm -hmm. Give me a spot hidden roll. I got it. 22 under 30. Okay. Okay. Um, that's really good, and what happens now is that, uh, Valda, you start to go around to the walls, and you notice like there's like this kind of refuse and like rag on the floor, and when you pull it away, you find um, some shards of pottery and even like a really old kind of golden or, or bronzed knife, like a, a ceremonial dagger. Okay. Maybe this is the cer the dagger that they used in the ceremony to like kill all of these people and put them in the honey. Okay, very good. Indeed. So it's we probably kill. Worth, probably worth more than the ruby if you were to hang on to that, Valda. I will pocket it for now. Um, you now have a ceremonial dagger of Natakris. Is there um, any like indication on the wall? There are no more like stories or anything. Just that one in that one hallway. Um. I'm looking specifically for like a ritual involving this stone and this knife. Yeah. Um, you see a place in the floor. Um, uh, I'm not going to make your roll spot hidden for it. That's a little raised, a little ways from the statue that does look like a slab that maybe you'd like place a body on. 
Um, and if you give me another spot hidden, Quincy, I might uh, let you know something else. That almost certainly fails. Um, 45, 53. Well, I could push this with luck. I would take nine luck, but that's right. Because mm -hmm. that's, well, yeah, why not? Go um, for it. I'm going to use luck to take this 53 to a 45. So that's eight. Is that right? That sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you're like, oh, there's nothing in here. It's completely everything. And then you look up and you realize that there is actually an exit out of this chamber. If you did the little climbing, you know, uh, sometimes volcanoes have side vents and things like that. And you can see the unworked roof of this chamber actually has a place where you could climb up and there's light twinkling way far above up there. Hmm. I think uh, consumed by greed, I will take this ruby with both my hands and uh, take a look at it. Not even not even using a bag, Pembley? <laughs> a bag or a, or a cloth or a rag? I, 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 don't, I don't. You clutch the ruby in both of your hands, and it is just like in your dream, Ian Pembley. You feel like you're falling into it, that you are um, falling through a mirrored scarlet haze. And what I would like for you to do right now is to roll your power. Power is uh, the... Uh, is the measure of your psychic resistance. Okay. Um, Mine is 60. Okay. So, oh no. Can I push it? Um, in this case, um, well, how would you push this? How would you push your resistance to whatever's uh, about to happen to you? I rolled an 80 over 60. I guess I would draw upon my experience from having this vision when I was knocked out and, um, sort of just it's kind of like when you're in a on a bad trip just reminding yourself like oh, oh you did you've you've experienced something <laughs> like this before uh, also I, i'm very skeptical of even given what i've seen i'm still fairly skeptical of this the supernatural powers at work i am going to i like your idea of like it's not real it's not real it's not real like uh, everything's fine um yeah so you guys are watching uh pembley like hold this thing and go it's not real it's not real it's, you know, everything's fine i i just everything's have to remain calm. Everything. just a, yeah. just a, just a gym just a gym you can roll again oh uh oh no i looked backwards 17 17 whoa so um, powerful you um for a moment felt like you were about to um see uh, a vision though and if you had like allowed yourself to give into it like you would have seen something something uh your mind would have flowed through time and space and you would have kind of become untethered for a moment and seen something miraculous but you have pulled yourself back from the brink what would you like to do now um so i feel like so I don't feel like it would have destroyed my mind that it would have been like some great sight. Um, right. Like it's some beautiful, um, you know, wisdom granting vision. Like, uh, you know, uh, for a moment you were, you were kind of like seeing like yourself as a child, you know, uh, on your uh, father's estate, like running, uh, through the green fields of England. And for a moment, you, you saw yourself, you know, uh, pushing like a, an old, like a papyrus scroll across the table and someone dropping silver pieces onto the table and like different moments in your life flash before your eyes in a second. But then you um, pulled away. Could I, could I then just drop those uh, mental defense? <laughs> <laughs> I take the vision if I feel like I, I'm like, oh, I would have liked to have. Is that have, what you'd uh, like to do? Do you sure, say yeah. Do you say any of that out loud? No, I think I'm like sort of like okay. still mumbling with my eyes closed. Yes, my other characters, you you may do something at this point. You see what you have seen is Pembley like struggling, like oh. <laughs> okay, <laughs> um, Valda would like to take um, her fancy clothes her formal clothes and she would like to throw her formal like jacket or top or something over the stone to keep it from um you know so that so that he's no longer like touching it or being able to be entranced by it give me a dex roll valda 
I rolled a 14. My um, deck, that's, uh, yeah. that's really good. Um, I'm going to say that you get the um, your dress around the ruby and pull it out of uh, Pembley's hands just as he sees a flash for one second of a canine face with slobbering fangs, like biting at him. Uh, and there is uh, he takes no sanity loss because you saved him from that. Um, but there is something vaguely familiar about that face, Pembley. <laughs> Something vaguely uh, familiar I get, about that. I get that very thing. close up to Pemblin. and I go, what's the matter with you? <laughs> you seem like you've seen a ghost. What's wrong with you? <laughs> what uh, What was familiar about, about that face? Give me an idea roll. Oh, boy. Um, sorry, I have to find it. An idea roll? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. That's just your intelligence. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Sorry. It's up there. Oh, All right. Here. Oh my God! A ninety-seven over eighty. <laughs> um, you, it, it's gnawing at you, uh, but you don't know. You can't re- quite put together because you only saw it in like kind of a blurry, hazy, indistinct moment, and then Valda snatched the jewel away from you. Uh, but uh, yes, there's something about it. Something about it. Quincy is chewing mm. on a piece of wood, just like yeah. absentmindedly. Like, <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Uh, I'll sort of like regain my senses. Like, oh, I was I, I, I having a, a vision from that from that stone. I'd say, I'd say, leave it covered. Definitely, there. you were acting very strangely. You were acting quite weird, Pemley, like me when I saw a big mermaid painting under the water about Atlantis. I saw it and I thought, <laughs> what's this? And then I couldn't remember what I saw after that, but it was very weird. <laughs> um, so strange, Quincy. So, what would you guys like to do now? You have the treasure. You've done it. You we succeeded. Don't, we don't know about that secret vent, right? That Quincy found. Um. Yeah, Quincy. Do you share that with everybody? Oh, immediately. Oh, okay. As soon as I see it, I go, "Oh, look, a hole in the ceiling." This way, um, we could go out this way instead of going back past all the bats and bees and people we lit on fire. I have a heavy leather satchel, so I would. Uh, I'll see if Valda will drop the ruby covered up and clothes inside Boop. Mm-hmm. all right and then i put my dress back and i try to smooth it out <laughs> <laughs> Very I'll, good. I'll, I'll buckle the satchel closed then all i want oh go ahead valda oh i propose we use the i say yes here. i've always thanked <laughs> you valda, and i think it's damn modern of you to do it right here and now but absolutely <laughs> okay quincy thinks yes. that you're proposing marriage <laughs> Um, <laughs> but what you're actually doing is proposing to use the climbing gear again, right? The climbing gear to make our way up to the hole that Quincy found for us. Then let's begin. Um, let's do uh, one last roll to uh, escape um, the, the, the mine of Natakris. Um, let's have uh, our leader, our climbing leader, she is going to roll her. Uh, wh- what is your climbing skill again? Uh, 45. 45. 45. But first, we're going to have her companions roll as well. So you guys, you know, get your ro- ropes fixed and you start to kind of uh, exit uh, the tomb and you're climbing toward the light high above you and you're having to really like use all your strength to lift yourself up over these ledges. And um, first, let me ask. Uh, Mr. Ian Pembley, how'd you do on your climbing roll? I got a 26 over 20, but I'd like to cash in six luck to make it. I think that's a good idea. And so uh, no stress is taken by, uh, or no sanity loss is taken by Valda for that. And now Quincy Ferrimore. For the uh, second like time to- I've succeeded. Oh, sorry. What were you saying? Oh, no, go ahead. Tell me. I've got a 28 under 40. Hey, excellent job. And now I want you guys to know that uh, Quincy is climbing really well. He does know the <laughs> proper way to climb. And also I want Quincy to make a constitution roll again. I would love to. Oh, no. Seven. A seven. <gasps> Under 70. That's an extreme success. Oh, you have a bit of heartburn, uh, <laughs> which is weird because you haven't eaten anything in a long time. But you're completely fine. And so uh, now it's time for Valda to make her roll. Valda, this 
could mean something. Uh, it could mean that you fall back down into the tomb uh, and po- perhaps injure yourself and your compatriots if you don't make this. How'd you do? Well, my climbing is 45 and I rolled a 55. So I could take it in sand. No, in luck or push ten it. Luck. Ten luck. You can luck. take it. Ten, ten luck, luck is your best bet. It's your easiest bet. And so okay. now I want to tell oh, you guys no. that you um you finally uh, pull your heads out of the soil. You're like actually moving plants and soil as you like it's like you're crawling out of your graves when you get to the top of this shaft and you fall out onto the side of a high mountain in the middle of Africa. <sighs> And the full moon is above you, and the great night sky of a million oh, no. stars shines oh, above you. I feel you great. Look, mm. And you look out over the vast jungle glowing in the moonlight, and you know that you have succeeded, and there will definitely not be any kind of strange <laughs> or horrible consequences from having a jewel that shows you your own death <laughs> or uh, from the strange bite you've taken down in the tomb. Hmm. No, everything is fine and you have made it. And so I will now allow you to let me know, what do you say? What do you do when you finally escape the mine? What are your final, uh, what the final scene look like? Pemley? LeBeau, uh, <laughs> may I just say, one, Pembley, I can't believe that you touched that bad rock with your hands after I specifically told you not to, but that's all right. Balda, I can't wait for us to live a happy life together, long and happy, after you sell that golden dagger for lots of money. I believe that we'll have enough to buy our very own hot air balloon and come back and really rub it in the face of all these villagers who were very, very rude to us. Well, I would like a hot air balloon. <laughs> and I am very thankful <laughs> that none of us died down there. I'm very worried about this bite, though. Quite the contrary. I feel better than ever. Here, under the full moon, having just gotten to climb right up a rope, nothing ever felt more natural in the world. I think I might go run around a bit. Just sort of let my legs touch the ground. <laughs> and when he does, you guys see that he's kind of loping on all fours. I've never <laughs> run like this before. I found a fun new way to run. Yeah, everyone should try. Um, and Pembley, any, uh, any final thoughts? Yeah, I think I'll smooth my bat shit covered uh, <laughs> explorers. Outfit. I'll be. What, uh, Volta? What say we uh, give Fairy Maw the slip and uh, we we can we can split our fines. You can keep the dagger. I'll keep this ruby. Great. So that, that sounds great for me. Right. Because there's, um, there's something clearly about to happen with <laughs> Pembley and, or Barrymore, and we just, we just, you know. Look how high I can right. jump. Look, I've oh. never jumped let's see how, before Let's see how can run in a single direction, Barrymore. Very good, I'll, Pembley. I'll you point it. away and I'll run that way. Which way? Just straight down. That way. That right way. There. Here we go. Yeah. And so Ferrymore, uh, with a, an almost canine or baboon-like grace, uh, goes loping off into the jungle, swinging from tree to tree as you both shake your heads and walk decidedly in the other direction. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, and that is where we will walking. end today's adventure of the Neptune Society. <laughs> yeah. um, very well done. Um I thought you guys did excellently. I really thought I might have killed you at one point, but you, uh, your research and your uh, strategic thinking saved you. And uh, you got a critical success on whether or not you were turning into a ghoul, uh, Quincy Fairymore. So, yeah. So I think that like next time we see you, the character will have changed. Okay. But, um, <laughs> but I think that you, I think Quincy retains his, Sanity. Beautiful mind. Okay. Yeah. Stronger, yeah. faster, maybe <laughs> stupider, but but still sane. Yeah. You, I know, like you know I love pushing like the ends of my character in both directions. So 100% on board for being an even dumber, but even stronger wolf wolf boy. <laughs> um, everybody checked a bunch of skills. So, I mean, well, all I'll say is like, I would really love to have you guys back for a further adventure later. And then when you come back, we will find out um you know if those skills improved uh and then um 
you know, you keep getting better, stronger, faster. I mean, Valda alone, you have like a pile of things that you uh, that you improved this 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 game, didn't you? I think um, I think really. Wait, what is that? That is that when I roll under things? Yeah, when you everything you checked, think, everything you checked has a potential to get better now. I think that's just first aid for me. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, well, maybe next time she'll be more of a combat medic and not just, maybe she could kick someone's ass and then heal them next time um, with, yeah. uh, with with more uh, with more certainty. Um, anyway, thank you guys so much. Uh, we, we'll have you all back at some point in your characters. And uh, I'm going to bid you a fond adieu. Thank you. That was, thank you. That was great. Goodbye, Thanks, guys. Everyone. I love Thanks. you. Wonderful adventure. Bye. <laughs> um, I'm going to hang out for just a second. Uh, in case anybody wants to say hi or ask me a question. And I'm just going to remind you about a couple things. I'm going to remind you that on Wednesday at 6 p.m. Pacific, we have our weekly game of Vampire the Masquerade. Our ongoing chronicle, Vampires of Pittsburgh, is reaching a fever pitch. Our fledgling vampire characters have moved past the... Uh, you know, getting their fangs and kind of uh, learning stage. And now they're moving into the, the what, what is the big defining plot of Pittsburgh right now, the infiltration of anarchs into the city. So I uh, really would love it if everybody would catch, uh, catch our vampire show. If you're not already hit that little heart on Twitch and follow us, follow us on Twitter, follow us on Instagram and go to the Facebook group. Cause we have lots of discussions. We post things, um, you know, I'm asking people questions about what they'd like to sh see on the show and anything like that. Um, so I'd love to, uh, chat with you there. Clint gets on there. Clint, my producer and, uh, sometimes co-host gets on there and talks with everybody. So hi Clint. So we would love to hear from you on there. Um, I, uh, that might be it for me unless anybody has any questions. Oh, here we go. Was the human heart thing decided before or after they chose to burn all the bodies? It was decided before. It was decided before. And I swear to you, if, uh, if Valda hadn't gotten her dexterity roll, they probably would have just fallen down a shaft and never gotten the ruby. Um, they probably would have been at the bottom of a shaft with a, I guess not a transforming fairy more. He critical succeeded against his strange transformation so yeah <laughs> yeah well i gotta do a whole adventure just about the wicker wicker man i think we got to do the neptune society version of the wicker man at some point um but uh uh yeah to answer your question uh that was decided beforehand Have you ever heard of a game 10 candles clint it is is the biggest 10 candles uh stan i know and you've run it many times haven't you clint uh, I've run it a bunch, and you like to run ten candles. Ten candles runs great. It is a standalone. It is the only game I've ever run where someone literally cried because they were scared to open a door. It just really the, it physically builds a fear mechanic into the game that is hard to beat. The room gets darker and darker as you go. I would it be possible I, to play it on a stream? No, not easily. Like the best thing about 10 candles is you physically have 10 burning candles in front of you and the characters are burning parts of their character sheet as you go on. Well, you know what? I actually have a group of people that I quarantine with, by the way, I hope everybody's being safe and staying home as much as they can and limiting their exposure to other people. And I have a group of people that I've been kind of that, yeah, you know, friends of ours that live close to us who we've all gotten our negative COVID tests and we've been kind of only seeing each other for a couple months and some of them like role playing. So maybe that's how we could get a game of 10 candles on the stream. I would also have to figure out how to shoot it. Oh my God. Well, let's do all this. I, uh, I have to just learn how to, uh, run an entire shoot film shoot <laughs> with open <laughs> flame. Um, I, to answer your question anyway, mana, that's awesome. And I would love to run that cause it's a horror game. And if it's as scary as Clint says, it's gotta go on the stream. So some way life will find a way and we'll figure it out. Um, Anybody else? Um, okay. Um, guys, I really love the Neptune Society. I love Vampire, but the Neptune Society is very near and dear to my heart. Um, I, and I like the fact that it's kind of a lighter Cthulhu game. Um, and I think that you're going to really love next week because we're going to go back to London. And we are going to check in 
with our detectives, Archibald Fredericksham and Slab, I think it was Slab Harris, uh, and Wilma Wiggles. Harrington. Oh, Slab Harrington. Yes, and Wilma Wiggles. And we are going to resolve the mystery that was started in the first two parts of that storyline, uh, which also involved a baboon-type creature uh, and um, a strange glass that could see into another world. Uh, so we're going to pick that story back up and and maybe get a conclusion to that. Um, but uh, if you have any requests or questions about the Neptune Society, please send them to us. Uh, I'll just remind you again, our art is by Will Potorf. You can find him at willpotorf.com. Uh, Ross Bryant provided that really creepy picture of Quentin Ferrymore. And our new opening music we, we use today is by Warbird, who you can um, get more music from at soundcloud.com forward slash Warbird. And that's it. Thank you, guys. And we'll see you. Uh, in just a couple of days. Yeah, yeah. Shab Nugurath, Cthulhu Fatagan. Bye bye.